NBC. It's a flawless evening in Charlotte. Welcome to the Duke's Mayo Classic on ABC, presented by Capital One. You can feel it here in the air tonight. College football, unfiltered, unmuted, bright, technicolor, high decibel. We have all waited for this. A top five collision to kick off the season. SEC, ACC, the Georgia Bulldogs, and the Clemson Tigers feels special and rare and this is an age-old border rivalry to boot folks welcome to our season debut welcome to charlotte chris fowler and kirk herb street so grateful to begin our 26th season together in this project with a game like this we know that COVID has not been conquered we know folks are facing challenge all around the country but tonight for the folks here maybe for you at home it just feels like that is set aside a little bit, and this is a celebration of everything we love about this game. Yeah, the, the passion, the energy that was missing last year as far as stadiums were concerned. We've been watching football since Thursday night, and we've seen these crowds. And now to walk into this stadium here in Charlotte, two incredible fan bases with Georgia and Clemson. And to get out there for pregame warm-ups, the coaches came over to us, almost tackled us. They're feeling that same energy, and I know, I know these players are, too. This going to be a lot of fun. A ton of talent on both sides, but also some questions. The last time we saw Clemson, they were getting destroyed by Ohio State in the playoff semifinal game. James Skalski kicked out for targeting for a second time in the playoff. Justin Fields in the Buckeyes offense, seven touchdowns, 600 plus yards, and Trevor Lawrence was just hounded. Of course, Lawrence moves on to Jacksonville along with Travis Etienne, and the top two receivers from a year ago, Amari Rogers, Cornell Powell, are gone. But don't pity Clemson. They have reloaded <laughs> themselves here. DJ Uyangalale was terrific in two emergency starts. Now he's got the keys to the car. Will Shipley is a freshman from here in Charlotte. Justin Ross is back after spinal surgery, and they got a whole squadron of receivers over there in Orange. Yeah, they, they lost a lot, obviously. Not, not just Trevor Lawrence and DJ Uwe Ungalale steps in. Travis Etienne's a significant loss, and anxious to see it's kind of a stable. Maybe Shipley, the freshman, gets an opportunity, but it's going to be a different attack. DJ brings a different set of skills. Of course, he's got the big arm, but I think his running style, all the way back to Taj Boyd, Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence, they were legit threats running the ball. He's more of a physical, almost like a tight end. How do they utilize him in the run game and play action? Because they got to make plays vertically in their pass game to win tonight. If they get big picture, the loser's not out of the playoff picture. They just have no margin for error. And that might put even more pressure on Georgia. You know the recent history of the dogs, the monster recruiting classes so close to a championship in 17, lost in overtime to Bama, lost the rematch, got clobbered by LSU in Atlanta, and then lost the division to Florida. They are picked to win the East this year. If they get out of this one, they're rolling forward. I, you know, I would defend Kirby and say they've been close. I mean, it, 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 to climb the mountain, you need to stay healthy and catch breaks. He's got a quarterback in Chase T. Daniels. We got a taste of him last year. Four games after the, he recovered from the knee, and he was electric. Had the whole offseason to build their offense around him. They're confident they can get off to a hot start against a great team tonight in Clemson. Well, the energy we know is so refreshing. It's also something new. About half of each of these rosters has never played in a big game in front of a full house. Can't wait to see what happens. Dogs and Tigers straight ahead. Having a top five game coming out the gate is what we came to Georgia for. All the fans are back. Clemson, you don't want to play any better team. The winning team gets a real shot of momentum. At the end of the season, this will be a game that's talked about. The Nissan pregame drive is next. After this message and a word from our ABC stations. See how excited he is? He's been doing it all day. <laughs> Great. I love Big Al. Welcome to the Nissan pregame drive. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Tigers and the Dogs are not the showcase game of this long holiday weekend, but it has been Something we haven't seen in this sport in a long time. Good games beginning on Thursday. And today, a Big Ten collision in Madison. Penn State went on the road, conquered the crowd in a defensive struggle. Scores at halftime, Kirk. Noah Kane broke a 10-10 tie, but they missed the point, and the Lions defense had to hang on. Yeah, the defense played great all game. Wisconsin 
coming up with a drive late, and it took Year Brown right here to secure the victory. Comes up with the interception. Penn State's defense, the difference in the red zone today to give the Lions a win at Camp Randall. Penn State hosting Auburn coming up. Meanwhile, Alabama and Miami and Atlanta and the Crimson Tide reloading. Don't miss a beat. Bryce Young in his first game. Looked like he's played the game for 12 years. Yeah, I was going to say, we knew this team would be great defensively. This one would, one, would be one of Nick Saban's best. But the offense with Bill O'Brien coming back from the NFL, Bryce Young, a new quarterback here, a transfer from Ohio State, Jamison Williams for a touchdown. They look like midseason four. Lost all that production, second most in all of college football. And there's Nick Saban jogging out to the 50 to meet Manny after another win. Bryce Young, four touchdown passes in the first half. But number two, Oklahoma, two picks by Radler. He threw for 300, but they gave up a ton of yards to Tulane. Iowa looks really good. They really do, and the Ducks held on, got pushed. We thought they might get a test from Fresno State. They hold on, they head to Columbus next week to take on Ohio State. All the charge up emotions tonight, but a couple of guys, extra incentive because they come from right here in Charlotte. Trenton Simpson is an edge pass rusher for Clemson, number 22. Keep an eye on him tonight. He will try to wreak havoc on JT Daniels in the pocket. You can see what it means on his face to be back in his hometown. Jordan Davis, big body in the middle for the Bulldogs. Big personality, also comes from Charlotte. It is hard to move that mountain of a man out of the middle. Can he shut down Clemson's running game? North Carolina, an important alumni base for both of these schools. Well, this has been the Nissan pregame drive. Kickoff for Charlotte is coming up. The Dogs and the Tigers. But now a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. Finally, another wide receiver in the house, my man. So, you ready to learn how the Heismans do it? Can't wait. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> Once at eight, then again at six. Ooh, they got some tricky ones in here. Hi. Did one of you gentlemen use Nissan at home to order 40 Pathfinders? Baker said it's another Heisman thing. I didn't think you'd believe me. Here are your keys, sir. Hey, let's go get breakfast. Rookie's back. College football is not just the game, not just the stars and the plays. It's so much more. The atmosphere, the look, the feel, the noise. And a stadium finally full of fans. Now, the best matchup of the weekend and maybe the year. He got it! Holy what a smoke. catch! Oh my goodness! Two top five teams with proud pedigrees. Highly touted QBs making their names. JT Daniels, DJ Uwe away. Touchdown, yes! Welcome home, football. This is a statement game. This is what we do. The whole package. When Georgia and Clemson clash on Saturday Night Football. Uh, your first knocked heads back in 1897. This is the 65th chapter in Georgia versus Clemson, the first in seven years. The stadium here has been Clemson Tigers home away from home. They've won five of the six ACC titles in a row right here in this building. Great to have the skills of Holly Rowe on our team this year, her 26th season covering college football. Welcome, Holly. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm here with Clemson coach Dabo Sweeney. And coach, how do you want to see your team take the exuberance and excitement in this building but play within themselves? Yeah, I just got to settle down and everybody focus on doing their job. It's time to play, a lot of preparation. Now it's about, it's about doing, all right? So just see them do their job. DJ has done this job before, but now it's his team. What do you want to see him do well tonight? Just play within the system and respond. You know, respond to success, respond to adversity, lead these guys. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Vice begins for a seventh consecutive college football playoff, and can't wait to see how 
DJ Uyunglele responds. Kirk has had a whole off season to study and be the guy. Preparation isn't the issue, but he can't bring all of Lawrence's poison experience, can he? His first game. Well, uh, I think he played a tremendous poise last year. James Skowski comes back, surprised a lot of people. But you know, one thing about DJ six two hundred. 6'4", 250 pounds. And JT Daniels, man, he plays with tremendous poise. Both these guys are going to have their moments and opportunities. And I thought Dabo brought up a good point. Not just about making plays, it's about responding to adversity, because that'll happen. Clemson's a home team wearing the orange. They won the toss and deferred. Man, last year, <laughs> had nothing like this. It feels great. Enjoy it tonight, folks. Zamir White, Eddie McIntosh, two running backs deep to receive the kickoff of BT Potter, who usually doesn't allow many returns. This one does reach the end zone, but McIntosh is going to bring it out. Runs through one tackle, fights hard to get out near the 25 yard line. These two quarterbacks, you got JT and DJ from LA, and they did collide in a very fierce rivalry in LA. St. John Bosco, Uyangale, modern day, JT. This is a playoff game early in DJ's career, and JT had the better of him that night. Yeah, he, he is uh, a little bit older, and these are two great programs. And you can see that time, modern day, one of the best programs out on that West Coast. Whoever plays quarterback typically has a lot of playmakers around him. Daniels was the third guy to start at quarterback last year for Georgia, went 4 0 as a starter, and lit up the stat sheet. Looking to throw in the first play, dumps it off underneath, and making the catch is the true freshman tight end, Brock Bowers from Napa, California. Welcome to college football. Yeah, they've been talking all camp about him. And take a look at our Chick fil A impact players, Amir White, get an opportunity along with James Cook in that backfield. With a lot of injuries to receiver Jermaine Burton, seven. He's got to get vertical and make plays. Brian Brzee, defensive tackle, 11. Last year as a true freshman, made an impact. Now has to go to another level. And 24, 23 rather, Andrew Booth, their top cover man. And a false start there for Clemson. Tyler Davis, the big man in the middle of that defensive front, not there. Clemson. False start. Offense, number 54. Five-yard penalty. Clemson won't confirm widespread reports of a positive COVID test, but how much will they miss Davis in the middle tonight? Well, he, he's an enforcer, and you can see now we're going to have Ro uh, Ro Ro Ro. And one thing about him is he's really worked hard. He came in at about 255 pounds, really known for his high school basketball skills, and he's gotten all the way up to 300 pounds. They said he's improved as much as anybody on that side of the football in camp. Penalty on Justin Schaefer makes it second and eight now. Play action, Daniels flips it short again. Again, second catch for Bowers in the young side end, making an impact, but wrestled out of bounds after a short gain. And it was Neil Inspector. Todd Monken, you know, known for their physicality. They want to run the ball tonight to set up play action, but they're expecting an aggressive Clemson defense. And a couple play action passes early. Comes the pressure ball out quickly. Another short completion and a first down catch by Marcus Rosemary Jack Saint. And it's great to see him back, a guy who broke his ankle in the game against Florida last yeah, year. Great, great point. And good recognition by JT Daniels there. Soft corner on third down. Goes into the boundary where he's got an easy throw and an easy matchup with that pre snap read outstanding there by 18. All the talk about we're going to come off the bus, run in the rock, pound the ball, Georgia style. Three passes to start the game. Zamir White is the back to the left of Daniels. He's got it. And has to sidestep traffic in the backfield, able to muscle for about four. And Todd Monken, as an offensive coordinator, I think he would tell you he, he has settled in more now this year. He tried to build a new offense with quarterbacks and Dwayne Mathis and Stetson Bennett, who are learning a new system in the middle of a global pandemic with COVID restrictions. Tough thing to do, and then JT Daniels doesn't come on until the last part of the season. Now he's had an entire offseason to build this offense around Daniels. He knows the players better. The players know him better. So Georgia's confident that they're going to be much better with Monken's offense. Good flag pre-snap. Yeah, Clemson bouncing around quite a bit up there. Delay game. Defense. They signal a clap. Five-yard penalty. 
second down. SEC crew tonight. That's Jason Otter. You don't see that called often. No, it's James Skowski. You know, like sometimes you yell move, move to just try to get the offensive lineman to jump. In this case, it was James Skowski who's clapping his hands. It's an indicator for the defensive lineman to stunt, to move, and bounce around. But the, the officials clearly thought he was trying to get an advantage there, and that's why they called the penalty. At age 23, he knows every trick in the book, the old man of that defense, but he got caught that time. So on second and one, he handed off left side and barreling is James Cook. It'll be running back by committee. We'll see White Cook and Kendall Milton. It might be the most talented of all of them. Yeah, they, they will mix it in. But that time, let's give an assist to the offensive line on that left side. Really good job of getting their hips turned. Schaefer, 54, probably the toughest lineman, does a good job. Dogs playing with some tempo, and Daniels is not a runner. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Consider that a win before Trey Williams tracked him down. Uh, Todd Monken taking a book, out of, taking a page out of the book of Ryan Day. Remember the last time we saw Clemson? It was a lot of confusion. Ryan Day and the Buckeyes, they got physical with the line of scrimmage. They mixed their tempo. They mixed their formations and caused problems for Venables in the communication. They've worked very hard on trying to improve that. But Todd Monken trying to test him here early after that first down. Pitch on the edge here to Milton. It's kind of a tricky thing, isn't it? You're not really a tempo team. You know the other team has a problem with it on defense, but how much do they employ that tonight? It's not really their ammo. No, it's not. And you don't have Justin Fields. You know, you don't you don't have the same offense, and it, it makes it a lot tougher to do. And you can see they're trying to get these big linemen. Look at that defense fly. I mean, that's their strength. It's tough to run wide on them because of how quickly they can move sideline to sideline. See, now Brent Venables likes to get the call in late, as late as he can, and that's the kind of the cat and mouse game with an offensive coordinator and a quarterback going up against Brent Venables. And he likes to see that last formation you're in and then make the adjustments with his communication from the sideline. Here's Daniels running out of time here, Kirk. Yep. They just got the snap off, third and eight. Got good protection, flips it short. Milton's got work to do, and he's not going to get anywhere near the marker. Spectre knocked him down, and it's fourth down. And they're able to get some pressure there, just enough with four. And they just sat back in zone on third down and long. There, they're just trying to make him dump this ball, take everything away downfield, and then rally to the football. Good job, good job by Spectre. And you can see, again, that defense can fly on that side of the ball. So Georgia moves the ball 27 yards, and now we'll try to pin Clemson deep. Jake Camarda, preseason All-American punter, just drops the tip. Boots it high, and it bounces and spins backward. That's what you hope for when you kick the football that way, and the coverage team able to down it right near the 10-yard line. And the concern there, it's Tate Ratledge, the guard who's on the cart for those Georgia offensive line starters. DJ Uyunglele and the Tigers offense will take over for the first time, but pin back at their 10. We have a hand count. We think the crowd's about 55% Clemson, 45 Georgia. AT&T 5G Skycam there. You can check out the AT&T 5G Skycam Skycast, streaming live on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. Georgia folks trying to make some noise as Clemson's first possession begins from the 10. Kobe Pace is the back behind DJ. Justin Ross in motion. Pace. Men in the backfield, spins free, gains a couple, but it was very quick penetration by Nicobe Dean. How about Dan Lanning deciding to bring heat? Watch the backers, both the backers here on the early down, anticipating inside run and able to slip through there. Keep an eye on 17. Dean, he is the leader of this defense. Top tackler a year ago, and there is Will Shipley. Highly hyped recruit from the Charlotte area. Excellent receiver and foul batted down at the line of scrimmage. Getting a big hand up was Devonte Wyatt, the sophomore. A little little pump fake, just trying to get this defense to bite on Justin Ross, who's coming underneath there on like a screen. Defense does a good job showing discipline and a big hand to get up there and knock it down. He's trying to, after that pump fake, get it to Davis Allen across the middle. He was breaking free. He had a, a, a nice spot there in the back of that zone, but. Give credit to that defensive line. Need eight on third down. Dogs rush three, drop eight, and they still get pressure and sack him at the three-yard line. 
Nolan Smith knocking the big quarterback down. Uh, it's time for Nolan Smith to take his pass rushing ability and go to a different level. That was the hope and that was the expectation in the first third down of the season. He gives Georgia fans a taste of what's to come. One on one against Jordan McFadden. Good coverage by the way downfield that eventually allows Smith to get home and come up with a big sack. Coach, when you get a three man sack against an offensive line, that is an ominous sign. <laughs> You're right. Will Spires, super senior in his 57th career game, gets off a booming punt. And Kyrus Jackson, not maybe fully explosive. He's still got that brace on the knee, but he's able to take the return in there before the tight end. Yeah. Davis Allen down. punt. Big stick. Up in the wood. Big Davis Allen. Wow. If you have a. The Duke's Mayo Classic on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Walmart. Save money, live better. The two energized fan bases made the home of the Panthers feel like a college campus. Very, very festive scene here. Beautiful weather. And these folks have waited a long time as you have. I want to say happy birthday, Kirk, to Coach Vince Dooley. He is 89 years old today. Guy who was four decades between coach and AD at Georgia won that championship in 1980. Watching the game tonight in Athens. Uh, happy birthday, coach! What an incredible career. He's happy about this old school exchange of punts, Kirk. That's got Georgia set up in Clemson territory for their second possession. They fake it to White. Daniels ball slipped out of his hands. I don't know if he was trying to pump fake it. Yeah, he's trying to get the ball again to. Brock Bowers, the talented true freshman, and I think I don't know if he if the ball slipped or he just tried to pull it back. It looked like he was maybe trying to pull it back. Didn't maybe want to let it go. He starts to kind of decel a little bit, and the ball just continues out of his hand. Incomplete. Simpson was in his face there, applying pressure. His first incompletion after a four for four start. Play action up. They fooled the defense and they slip it back here to Lad McConkey. And he's a freshman. They expect to play a role. It's a depleted Georgia receiving core, Kirk. They don't have George Pickens or Dominic Blaylock for a while. Yeah, it was funny. I was talking to Kirby about that on the field before the game, and he said, Keep an eye, I'm telling you, man. 84. He's a former walk-on. He would have put him in a slot. Probably one of the fastest guys on our team, and he's got some wiggle. I just hope he's able to hold up, you know, and, and the, the bright lights and Got a little taste there of what he can do. Another third down for Georgia here. Seen two true freshman catch passes so far for the dogs. Cook goes in motion. They swing it to him. A block on the edge, but not good enough. Fighting through that block was Simpson. And Booth over there as well, and it's fourth down. What an effort there by Booth. He's a corner with great length. He's known for his ability to cover. He's way out here. Third down, right? Watch his eyes, watch his how quickly he's able to come up and make gets off that block and makes the play. Kirby Smart feeling like a mini gamble here. He's got the offense on the field. They need three full yards. Got to get inside the 40. See if it's a bluff. Daniels moving around, directing. Clemson showing good discipline so far. And now the play clock winding down. And the way their defense looked in that first series for Georgia. Yeah, I'd play field position here if you're Kirby. Well, they tried to get the cheap five. Clemson wouldn't play yeah. yeah. I mean, I know it's a world of analytics, but you got to pull yourself away from analytics for a second and just think about trying to pin them the way they did the last time and, and turn that defense. Well, what are you saying? You ignore the analytics yeah. in the book? Yeah. How dare you? You can't do that anymore in modern football, can you? <laughs> top five, two top five teams in a game week one. I thought oh, analytics man. was the Bible. <laughs> got it. You got to follow some instincts mixed in with some analytics. Thank until that, until that defense gets uh, the ball moved on him, I, I keep trusting him with the, the ball pinned back deep in Clemson territory. Marty again, interesting punt return. This is Will Taylor, who is a backup quarterback wow. and also a receiver. He got out of the way and absolutely perfect execution again by that coverage team. That's what you do, honestly. I mean, that's the second time we've seen great special teams. This game just has a feeling. That it could be a low scoring field position kind of game. We're getting analytics. This is old school tonight. <laughs> it's all right. 
Tony Elliott, Boyles Award winner, very experienced. Kirk, what are his challenges as a play caller tonight? Well, the line of scrimmage, not to mention where the field position's been his first two series. He's got to find ways to get quarterback run game and get the ball on the perimeter away from that strength at the inside of that Georgia defense. Triangle lay three yards deep in the end zone to receive the snap. Has time. Launches downfield and a battle on the edge. Overthrown. Tried to get the ball to Justin Ross, and a couple of flags come in. Ringo is in coverage. Yeah, Ringo's a true freshman with great length at 6'2", 205 pounds. He got handsy there near the end of the route, pushing. The, the, the Pass interference. Defense number five. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. First of all, you said, what does Tony Elliott have to do? And you know, he's backed up deep inside his own territory. You can see the left hand clearly. You know, the, almost the entire route. He's, he's getting that left hand and grabbing, hooking. That's what they call it. Clemson catches a break, but the, the guts there with a young quarterback against this defense to call that shows you the confidence they have in DJ. Great to see Justin Ross. He lit up Alabama the 18 championship game at a good 19, but then out all of last year, a pair of spinal surgeries. Many thought he would not ever be able to play again. It was only very recently cleared for contact. Yeah. Incredible story. Dabo Sweeney jogged in at the top of the screen to try to get a timeout. He didn't like what he was seeing. He did get that timeout. Now the discomforting thing for Elliott, you mentioned it. Timeout. Clemson. You can take downfield shots, but if you can't block the dog's front, it's going to be a long night. You don't want it just to be about the vertical pass game. And with the length they have at receiver, you know, the days of Amari Rodgers last year, Hunter Renfro before that, they were able to kind of work into the teeth of a defense. It's tough to do that with most of these receivers that are 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 and taller. Holly, what are you hearing down there? Well, guys, you talk about Justin Ross returning to play football. He had a congenital spinal issue that he never knew he had until one day at a Clemson practice he got hit, and he just had a stinger. The consequent surgery was two different times they had to go in there and fuse those discs in his neck. He has been with a doctor that was working with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they said, you know, it's just kind of a miracle that he's even able to play. They've never seen a football player playing with two different fusions, but the doctor said that he is cleared to play. Justin and his mother made this difficult decision, and Dabo said it was all up to them. He wants to be out here on the field with this miraculous injury and healing. First and 10. Play action, and they get it to Ross on the edge. The guy has 112 career catches, but thought it was all over it. Isn't that amazing? If they hadn't had that routine medical checkup for the singer, they would never have found never that know. congenital problem. Yeah, I mean, he had it his whole life. Think about that. I mean, you're, you're one hit away from this thing being really, really bad, so he's fortunate that they were able to catch it. And then the procedure, it was a 50-50 chance. They told his, his mom and he, hey, we're not even sure it's going to work, but at 50-50 chance, he'll be able to play football again if it does. It's worked out. Second and four, play clock winding to five seconds. Dogs crowding the line now. That pre-snap chess match. Here comes the pressure. They pick it up on a pitch outside. Try to get it to Ross. Not on the same page. And Darian Kendrick, the former Clemson Tiger, had some problems there. Now with the dogs is in, on the field there. Dan Landing, the defensive coordinator, along with Kirby Smart, have come up with an idea, Chris, that they want to move around. Look, he's, he calls the play, gets everything set, and then you see Dean hop in there. No, 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 let's move around. Let's constant movement, effective communication of the offensive line, and then get a push up the middle led by Jordan Davis. Need four. Keep the drive going. See the movement there. Here comes the pressure again. Oyangale sack for a second time. They heated things up, but look out for Nicobe Dean. He's going to have a monster season. 17 is a problem. Yeah, 17 and 7. They're very active with these inside linebackers. You're going to get pressure here. You're going to get pressure here. And watch the offensive line step down, and they're just overwhelmed on that right side. There's just not enough bodies there. Dan Lanning is dialing up pressure and dominating the line of scrimmage with his talented front. So DJ's had a pass knocked down at the line and been sacked twice. First two possessions combined, negative five yards. Spires, under some pressure, gets another good punt away. 
And Kiris Jackson retreats to make a fair catch at the 36 yard line. So they got a little bit of field position thanks to that pass interference call. Holly. Well, guys, JT Daniels, the Georgia quarterback, has had a very unusual trajectory. He was a high school star in Southern California, honored at the ESPN SB Awards, was a huge deal going into USC, but things just didn't go right. Five and seven in his freshman year. Then the very first game of his next year, he tore his ACL. Subsequently felt like he needed a new start, got beat out a little bit at that position, and here he is cross country at Georgia. Said, I've struggled a little bit with this adversity. I did well with success, but it's been tough. He sought out some help for his mental health and guys he is in a really good place right now and bursting up the middle there is Kendall Milton takes up eight it's incredible uh, we had a, a, some sound this morning with Kirby Smart on college game day and we, we showed him talking about seeing a sports psychologist and what a big difference it made for him because it's one thing to be a five star it's another thing to deal with that adversity well he got some adversity there coming <laughs> off the edge quickly with Trenton Simpson and Daniels had to just throw the ball into this brand new field turf here yeah and, and one thing when you have a quarterback in college football today that's that's not real mobile makes it obviously easy it's a good job by Simpson staying home and anticipating that that boot but you got you're more of a distributor you know a lot of these college quarterbacks they can create they move around they're a threat the defensive coordinator has to worry about them creating that's not the case with JT Daniels so it allows Brent Venables to attack those running backs take a few more risks because they're not they don't have to worry at all about 18 taking off and using those legs they're gonna have to hurry unless they spend a the time out here it's third and two. Yeah, you don't want to hurry this play. Yeah, they took a long time. Daniels checking the sidelines. Timeout. Georgia. You say First time out of the half. Pre snap, he's elite. Seconds. But is he a little bit too analytical with the ball in his hands when the bullets are flying? That's the question, Kirk. Can he process fast enough? Yeah, well, and, and people forget. You think he's, you just saw Holly showing what he's been through in his timeline. He's still a young guy, relatively speaking, as far as reps in a game. I mean, he had a season at USC. He gets hurt early, ends up transferring. Last year, just four games. So I, I feel like we're in the middle of watching him develop. So we're learning as we watch. Yeah, the four games set three of the weaker teams in the SEC yeah. at the end of the season. And then the best defense he played was the Cincinnati Bearcats in the bowl game when he played well. But it's hard to extrapolate that four game capsule into an entire season and think he's going to light it up. Many think he's the best quarterback in the SEC, though. Yeah. Bryce yeah. Young may have something to say about that. But again, because of his skill set and lack of, of, of foot speed, he's he's the epitome of he's going to be as good as the players around him because of that ability to distribute and make quick reads. White is the back. He's got it in third and two. He slipped down and there's a flag pre-snap. Yeah, Georgia had movement on the left side. It's actually a break he wasn't going to make the first down. False start. Offense. And Brady three. Five yard penalty. Yeah, we've seen evidence, Kirk, of what it's like. Again, it was muted. They didn't play in front of crowds last year. It, it is incredible how new it is for so many players tonight to play in front of a full house and this kind of energy in a big game. I know. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. And I think even tonight, because of a mixed crowd, it, it's going to depend. There's Matt Luke, the offensive line coach. But it's going to depend really on which side of the field you're on. If you're looking from our monitor, game monitor, to the left is where most of the Georgia fans are. So when Clemson's had the ball, they essentially had felt like they were on the road in front of that Georgia crowd. Benny McIntosh goes in motion out of the backfield. Daniels is looking over the middle and airmail to try to get it again to the tight end, Brock Bowers. And a flag comes in right in the middle of the pit there. See if they grabbed him. And they have grabbed over the middle. Like a safety actually got up there and got his, got his, looks like Jalen Phillips. Pass interference, defense, number 25. The ball be placed, with spot of the foul, automatic pressure. Good spot, that's who it is. Yeah, and, and he really didn't even need to do this. I and mean, they're playing zone. C25 right there just grabs a hold of it. The ball, I don't think it had a chance because of Skalski being there, but the dogs catch a break on third down and they come up with a first down. Oh, right at midfield. And a slow developing running play. 
And a swarming defense. Brian Brzee, the sophomore, sitting up for a monster season, made the tackle for loss. Yeah, he, he's on the, the right side of George's offensive line. He's right here. He'll fight his way through. But look at the backup here. Remember, we do not we don't have Tyler Davis or Trey Williams also getting some reps, but both inside tackles that time, getting vertical and getting penetration disrupt that play. Both defensive fronts controlling line of scrimmage yeah. against the opposing offensive yeah, lines and, tonight. And both these teams need to run the football. I mean, Georgia prides themselves on winning the line of scrimmage and running the football to set up play action. Behind the six, second and 13, they swing it in the flat to Cook. Again, Daniels getting the ball out quick. These are very, very short gains. Yeah. Specter stopped them. And, and you, I think you very astute there. I mean, the ball most most apart tonight. Ball is out. I mean, you're talking a second and a half. Ball is out. They're, they're very respectful of the pass rush. Brent Venables, who usually mixes things up, he'll play a ton of man depending on who he's playing. Tonight, he's trusting that front to win, playing a lot of zone, trying to give JT Daniels different looks, not give him those easier looks at one on one matchups. More zone here, too. Seven completions for 30 total yards. On third and seven, Daniels has good protection. And once again, it's that tight end. Brock Bowers is open. He's got three catches. It's a first down at the 35. Yeah, and he's nobody's across from him. Easy release this time for Bowers. And he's dropping a defensive end, but that's an easy pitch and catch. Again, going back to what Todd Monken says, good recognition, pre-snap read. He knew as soon as he got the football that he was going to go to the talented freshman. And Clemson made it easy on the tight end by not rerouting him or jamming him at the line of scrimmage. With that Cali connection tonight, L.A. to Napa, he hooked up three times. Dogs do a good job recruiting in California, by the way. Got a nucleus of offensive players from the Golden State. Angel Milton is one of them from Fresno. That was Zamir White who knifes, and they say Zeus. And they, they pick up a couple first downs and go back to their bread and butter running the football. Looks like Brian Brzee, 11, is down, holding that. Looks like he's holding that right arm. Shoulder would be a serious concern for Z and Miles Murphy, number 98. Both had excellent freshman seasons. They expect them to even take a quantum leap forward in their sophomore seasons tonight. And again, playing without the veteran Tyler Davis, not on the available list. Reports of a positive COVID test. Boy, he, Big fella grimacing. Yeah, I, I think he knew. It wasn't like he got pounded into the ground. That was while he was being blocked by Erickson. He, he almost gave up in the middle of the play and, and started to want to take a knee. You know, he's right in the middle here. Watch as soon as they hit him. He just kind of says, oh, kind of checks out. And this guy is as tough of a guy as there is in college football. Seventh play of the drive. Second and three. White. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a hard earn yards with the running game tonight. He dives down short of the marker. They're really going to test the depth of the interior. Remember, Tyler Davis already out. Uh, we've seen Brzee check out. So now Trey Williams is in there. Darnell Jeffries is in there 90. But they're really working with trying to prove that they've got enough depth to hold up in the interior against a very physical Georgia offensive line. Tyler Davis and Brzee, you can put them in. Top five, maybe, is inside defensive tackles. On third down. Ball came out. White fell on his own fumble, and they do move the sticks. Lamonte Bentley made the hit. Bentley drilled him. Ball came out, and you're, you're right. After this big hit right there, puts his head right, face match right on the helmet or the, or the ball. The ball just happened to bounce right back to him. Or that's a Clemson turnover. Good job of filling there by Bentley, but another first down. This, you know, Georgia, it's like a boxer sees that there's a cut. They start to see that they've got a matchup advantage in the middle. They're going to try to run that football in the middle of that, uh, that defense. These are body shots. You want to keep the in helmet you're going here. Yeah. Georgia's run 19 plays. Clemson six so far. Daniels flips it one more time. It's the tight end. Bowers does a good job to slip a tackle. Fights for a couple yards. Skowski eventually got him. Fortunate today with Darnell Washington out of the lineup. And got a young freshman, Brock Bowers, who, I, as I said, was a big story in camp. You know, sometimes players emerge. Oh, boy, now we have James Skowski, the leader and veteran. He's got the right arm hanging down. Yeah. But anyway, Bowers emerged and very fortunate for Georgia's 
offense to be able to have him. Washington, very tall, athletic tight end, is a real weapon. He was in the walking boot before the game. John Fitzpatrick, another veteran, he'd been hampered in camp. So number 19 had to step in, and he's showing why they were so excited about him in Athens. There's Skowski made the tackle. Think about Skowski. I mean, we, we kind of were talking to him on the Zoom about when he gets into contact, he lowers his head. He's been thrown out of a number of games because of that, and I hope he's okay. Yeah, the last two CFP games he's played in, ejected for targeting. Milton is the back now and taking it. Eight. Jake Venables in the lineup down the middle there. Final minute of the first quarter. Daniels downfield shot over the head of Lad McConkey had him open. That's the first time they've actually tried to press the ball. Yeah, I mean, and, and again, they were able to get behind, right between, the, behind Goodrich, in front of the safety. Really a tight throw. Not a real tall receiver. Tries to go up and, and make a play on it. Pretty good throw, but again, you're trying to squeeze that in there between a corner and a safety with a shorter receiver. That's a tough ask, and James Kowski gets back in the lineup. Yeah, a short slot receiver, not the ideal guy to throw to down there. So Skowski, the leader in the middle. Tigers on third and eight. Back off a bit, end zone throw battle on the edge. Flag comes out. Donna Mitchell was defended by Mario Goodrich, and it's going to be a pass interference. Yeah, he threw it right away. And Daniels time to throw the football. We wondered if that would be the case, especially in obvious passing situations. I mean, he, he just closes off the route. Goodrich doesn't allow him to, to go downfield. Two fouls on the play, one by each team. Holding offense, number 54. Pass interference, defense. Those fouls offset, replay third down. So Justin Schaefer penalized for the second time tonight. It's a break for Clemson. Nullifies the pass interference. And it'll be third and eight again. Bill Lamagne, great to have him in the booth as our rules expert again this year. Great to be back with you guys. I actually, looking at that play, thought the receiver hmm. was more guilty of contact and a push off than the defense. The offsetting fouls. And Daniels rolls, dumps it short and short of the first down. Catch made on the edge by Jermaine Burton, so it's fourth down. They'll need about two. Real quick, Bell, I want to ask you, if the corner takes away the ability for the receiver to run the route, just kind of closes it off, and the receiver runs into him, is that on the receiver or on the defensive back? If he steps right in front of him and there's contact, it's nothing. But if the, he's there and the, and the receiver continues to push off, then it's going to be on the receiver. That's what you thought maybe was there. Okay. Another flag to sort out on this play. Offense, number 59. Yeah, from the previous spot. Roderick Jones, an experienced right tackle. So once again, that Georgia offensive line guilty of the infraction. It's going to be Chris. I think declined. they. I think they ended up calling it. Poor guy. I think it was actually Sailor, the left tackle, who snuck downfield. They ended up calling it on 59. So. Some confusion on where to snap yeah, the ball. There is. See, so they'll put it back to the 27 yard line. It should be third and 13. It was third and eight. Seconds ticking away. Doubtful Georgia will snap it before the end of the quarter. And they don't. So, defense is in control. Georgia owning field position and an edge in total yards of 70 to negative five after 15 minutes in Charlotte. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Set for the second quarter, the Duke's Mayo Classic on ABC presented by Capital One. NFL off weekend, so Trevor Lawrence was on the sidelines pregame, now sitting in the stands. Jaguars and the Texans open their season. Dogs need 13. Keep the march going as we begin quarter two. Tigers not showing pressure. Only rush three. Daniels underneath. Sliding catch short of the first down is Burton. He has a full field read. He works from his left. 
comes all the way back to his third option. Those linebackers cleared out. Watch him look left, come all the way back to the right. And again, finds got a couple receivers. He finds Burton who settles in right in the middle and gives his kicker a much easier attempt here for the three points. Your two solid kickers tonight for the dogs is Jack Pazlesny. Jack kicked a 53 yarder to beat Cincinnati. A walk, a virtual walk off field goal in the Peach Bowl. And hooked this one. Hooked it. And a 45 yard drive produces nothing, and we're still scoreless. Just when I talk about how we're live. I know. MVP of the Peach Bowl. Whoop. Hooked it badly. Yeah, I mean. The hold looks good. Yeah, he just he just hooked that. By the way, by missing that field goal, Clemson, who by the way in the first quarter ran six plays, they had three three and outs. They have, they have six yards of passing so far, total yards minus five, and they're going to start with their best field position of the night, starting at the 20 yard line. Let's see if Tony Elliott can find ways to get. I'm going to lay. A little comfort get the ball to the playmakers. He's going to have to run the ball side. tonight, Chris. He's going to have to run. He's a big physical guy. They get up to Shipley. Wow. He's home down and he is tracked down and dropped behind the line of scrimmage by Channing Tyndall, the money backer. Tyndall can fly. These linebackers can fly right here in the middle. It's Tyndall from the backside who's able to read it right away and anticipate and then take off. Nobody is there to be able to pick him up because I don't think they expected that kind of speed running sideline to sideline. This is Saban protege. I love the name of some of the positions here. Money, Jack, Max, Star. <laughs> no, no boring position names. Ongangale dumps it short. Ross is grabbed and fights free, but picks up a few and that will be third and long. Right now, they, because they can win at the line of scrimmage, these backers are active. There's no fear of anything downfield. And it's allowing the safeties and the backers to let the ball be thrown in front of them on these quick short passes and then use their speed to chase the ball down. I don't think just watching this, you don't feel that these corners are overwhelmed or intimidated at this point in the game by these talented Clemson receivers. They have length, but I don't know if they have the speed to strike fear in this Georgia defense. Both dogs' sacks have come on third down. They don't bring heavy pressure this time. Shipley makes the catch, slips a tackle, and the freshman picks up a first down for the Tigers. Their first. He got out of the tackle of Dean that time. Yeah, you, you got to make a play like this. He's a running back who he's a playmaker. He can do things like this in space, and he's got physicality to be able to break off of a tackle. An outstanding high school player right in this area. Went to Weddington High School, one of the top high schools in this state, and was an outstanding player, great lacrosse player. So you know he's fired up to have his first game. In that uniform right here back home. 40 touchdowns last year in his senior year, 2,000 rushing yards. DJ's got it rolling and now just scampering out of bounds. He was chased there by Christopher Smith. You know, I, I keep going back to this because when Chad Morris first came here and they had Taj Boyd, Taj Boyd was a factor that defenses had to account for. Whether it was scrambling or creating running plays within his own read or quarterback keep. And then the baton was handed to Deshaun Watson. Same thing. He didn't run all the time, but he ran enough to make you have to respect it. Same with Trevor. And you would think with DJ, you're going to have to see more of that to make the defense realize he's willing to be a runner. Yeah, the bigger the game, the more the quarterback yeah. ran for Clemson, right? Yep. From the pocket, gets it out over the middle. Caught on the slant there is Joseph Ngata, and the Tigers got something going now in Georgia territory. And it, and it just feels like a little bit more urgency. And now they're really cranking the tempo after this first down, trying to get this Georgia defense on its heels. Ngata, another guy who was out injured last year, showed his talent as a young guy, expected to be a big part of this receiving core this year. Messed up the snap. We are going to lay lucky to field it on the bounce and we'll just power forward for a yard. It almost looked like he snapped that like he felt that he was underneath him. Like Bachhorst to his move from guard to center. He looks like did he snapped this. It's almost like he stopped the snap halfway. I don't know what happened. Short arm that back. <laughs> he did. 
Other simple things, Kirk, aren't so simple, right? When you haven't played in a big crowd and big game. Yeah. Opening game. That was a that was a strange snap there by the big man. On the edge, Ross trying to make a man miss. They, excuse me, EJ Williams. They closed him down quickly. Hit by Quay Walker. And number 36, Breeny. Yeah, that's Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator, play caller. That's what he's doing. His answer to these blitzing linebackers and the and the physicality of the defensive front is they've got to get the ball on the edge. You know, we've seen the freshman Shipley make a play. We got the ball out to Nagata. They they, you know, they typically over the years jet sweep, quick throws to the perimeter, try to get away from that pressure in the inside. It's tough sledding there between those tackles. The nine on this third down. Again, the fumbled snap. DJ shows good poise. He's not going to escape. The timing was messed up. But again, the simple things, not so simple so far today for either side. No, in that time, it was just DJ with his eyes downfield. You know, it's a big third down. The snap's fine. Watch his head look up. See how he just starts to peak? Didn't quite secure the ball. As you said, Chris, good poise to just pick up the ball. But see, he's still trying. He's scrambling to throw. He's not scrambling to run. See him peek up there? That's what I, I just don't think he actually had the ball before he, he was so such in a hurry to read the coverage that he didn't quite have the football. Two starts last year. They fell way behind at Boston College. Biggest rally in school history. The 400-yard game at Notre Dame. But situationally, Little, little shaky on third downs and in the red zone. And again, it's a good defense and a hostile yeah, environment. Yeah. Timeout. Clemson. This is their second time. trying to get tricky there with the punch. Yeah. If I'm Brandon Streeter, the quarterback coach, or I'm Tony Elliott, or I'm Dabba, I pull him aside. And he's got a brilliant, brilliant career ahead of him. Hey, tonight, when you get out of there, go. Run. Urgency. we got to get six yards. Get eight yards. Run the football. CFB National Championship Trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. Semifinals are on New Year's Eve this year. Arlington and Miami. Then the championship game in Indy for the first time. January 10th. You're not handing that to Alabama and Saban quite yet? I'm not. No. No. They, 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 are you? They, they look pretty impressive today. I'm not handing it to them because you got to earn it. But they look like very much the team to beat. Winner of this game could go to number two, actually. With what's happened in the top five, Oklahoma yep. and Ohio State not being dominant. Chris Felica, the Bear, in his day for the Athletic Trivia Question. Hello, gentlemen. About to ask Hello. tonight's Athletic Trivia Question. As you know, it's been a while since the national champion lost their season opener. All 28 teams in the college football playoff won their season opener. So who was the last national champion to lose their season opener? Was it Colorado? Colorado had a tie, so the close. No, they tied Tennessee yes, back early in the early fifth round game. Right, yeah. Hmm. Well, it's obviously, as you said, not the playoff era. Why well, say won the title? They lost their second game of the year, right? Yeah. Milton barrels forward, takes a hit, but gains eight. By picking up a few first downs, Clemson's again been usually close to their own goal line most of this first half. At least that time they pick up a few first downs. Good punt, good special teams. Now they get Georgia pinned back. Let's see if their defense can take advantage of that. But a good first down play by Georgia to get this drive started. Play action on second and short. An easy pitch and catch. Rosemary Stack Saints got the first down. That's Georgia football right there with Todd Monken. Run the football, affect the eyes of the safeties and the backers, make them respect that aspect, make them hesitate, get the corners a little soft, and then quick, easy throws to the outside. The combination of those, and then they're going to take a shot. Jermaine Burton, seven. He's their best vertical threat with Pickens out. And, and Burton emerging last year, he's the guy on the top of the screen that can get downfield, catch you napping. All SEC preseason team. And they get out in the flat. 
no gain. They were all over. John Fitzpatrick continue to feature the tight ends on short routes tonight. Yeah, I mean, at these safeties right now, it's almost like Munkin is trying to bait them. Like, oh, no, no, we're not interested in going downfield. I mean, watch the safeties. As soon as they, they're just flying down. They, they're not even thinking of, they're going to leave their corners on islands. At some point, you've got to do something to make them respect it and try to stretch them. I mean, even though Booth at the top's outstanding cover guy, take some shots. Daniels again, quick throw. And catch is made by Lad McConkey. Skalski tackled him a couple yards short. It'll be a third down. And, and a lot of this has to do with what what Brent Venables is doing by playing so much zone. There's some soft pockets where they're throwing that football. Third and short tempo. Didn't fool him. Brazil just muscled through a blocker and grabbed McIntosh. And that time they were ready for the fast pace. And it's fourth down. Yeah, they were almost anticipating it. Brazil works around, little stunt. He goes around all the traffic and wants to pick man gets a hold of you. He's going to bring you down one way or another. Good job by Clemson against that tempo of being ready and flipping him around to free him up. It's a big stop for the Tigers' defense. You know, Taylor is back deep to receive Camarda's punt. Very high. Taylor has to retreat and make a fair catch. We've seen some excellent punting tonight. We got that going for us. Hang time. Over almost six seconds. By Capital One on ABC is brought to you by Duke's Mayonnaise. The only mayo with that southern something that added on. Dukes, it's got twang. And UKG, our purpose is people. Dogs won the title in 80 and 81. It was Clemson winning a championship and it got launched by Herschel Walker's only loss in the regular season game in Georgia. Excellent punting tonight. Marta's three punts have all been down inside the 20. So the Tigers take over again, backed up at their 15. Margin of error in a game like this, week one, or field position is in, is dictating, you know, who has the advantage. From the pocket, and no chance to make a play on the air. Neither defense has allowed anything close to an explosive play tonight. They tried to sneak in a sneak in a wheel route there, and Galloway picked up by seeing down the sideline. Streak at stake. 143 games they've scored in the first half. But he's got a longer streak. Second down. Misdirection handoff back inside and going absolutely nowhere. Dixon Carter on the stop. You know, this Clemson offense, you know, people would say without Trevor Lawrence, I would say without not just Lawrence, but Travis Etienne. You know, Clemson could not run the football last year. And they'll tell you, well, people crowded the line because of Etienne, so they had to throw the ball to him a lot. I would tell you, I don't think Clemson's offensive line was as good as they've been in years past. And now you take Etienne's playmaking ability away from this offense with an offensive line that's still trying to build continuity. Makes it tough. It takes away the running game. It puts it all on DJ in the passing game. Last third down, they didn't bring the heat. Now they bring pressure. DJ gets it out. Again, miscommunication with Ross. They tried to target him a lot, Kirk. Again, hasn't played since 2019 and not on the same page with DJ so far. No, no. He, he's trying, and again, he's getting pressure. And, you know, it's different between scrimmaging in, in August versus going up against a defense on national TV in a full house. He's getting his, his internal clock saying, I got to get the ball out. Ball's behind and early, and you see the frustration there with Ross kind of putting his arms up, wanting that football a little bit more out in front of him. Clemson had to run a man on late. They only had 10 on the punt team. There was Jackson back deep with the dogs. Spires can do it all, kind of rolls out, kicks it Aussie style, but it's not very good. And it hit a couple of guys over there. Clemson believes they have recovered. Did it touch a Georgia man? Two guys were tangled up at midfield, but it took a bounce. Yeah, I, think it, I think it hit, definitely hit a Georgia player on the foot. 
And that is the signal. Clemson football at midfield. First really major mistake so far. Take a closer look. Yeah, I think it was Milton too. Watch his foot right there. He kicks the ball up in the air. Just got the laces of the shoe on the laces of the football. Just barely grazed it if he did. Yep, it changed direction after it hit his foot. And of course, and once it hit, I mean, there's just nothing but Clemson jerseys. Again, week one in a game like this, two great defenses. It's going to come down to which team makes a critical mistake is going to be the team that ends up losing this game. See if Clemson can take advantage of it. That's some really good punts tonight. That was the ugliest punt of the night, but it created some chaos down there. They'll review the play. We'll take a break. Call stands, Clemson football, but whose foot did it hit first? Skalski? Bill Lamagne, it's, it depends on whose foot it touched, doesn't it? It does depend on that. You also have the thing that if the kicking team player was knocked out into the ball, it, it's ignored. Well, they, they, they said it's play uh, the call in the field stand, so they did not confirm it. No, but I think it was a correct call. Okay. Tigers at midfield, the kind of mistake that could spark the offense here. Although Georgia defense, which led the country in rushing yards allowed by about 25 yards a year ago, they're in no mood. Let the Tigers run up the center tonight. Now it's, again, it's 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 tough to get not just a push against that front because they're so big and physical. But Chris, those linebacker, the line can't get up to the linebackers because they're the defensive line. They're eating all those double teams. It's just freeing up Walker and Dean to make plays just flying downhill. Second and eight in the play action. DJ Rolls wanted to throw back to his left. And now fires for a first down. Ross goes down low at the 36. He's looking back to Shipley, who was on that wheel route. And again, if he takes off and runs, he's probably going to pick up a first down as well. But he again, he's he is scrambling to throw. And that time, he's able to find the rhythm there and timing to get the ball to Ross, who's able to separate from the DB. Don't look now, but Will Taylor, who's been a punt returner, kind of a dual threat quarterback. In there in shotgun formation, spelling Leon Lale and first down. They hand it up inside to Kobe Pace. So that's a wrinkle. Yeah, Will Taylor, a high school quarterback, a great player, great athlete. Actually, thought he might be drafted in the first round of the amateur baseball draft. And if he would have gone in the first round, he would have had a really tough decision to make. Instead, he decides to play football and he'll play baseball. Clemson as well, a true freshman. So he's very familiar with running the option when he gets in there as a different wrinkle. Picked up two. Pace, the running back lined up in the slot, empty backfield. Ball out quickly. Catch made. It's Breeden Galloway, the tight end. He'll be four yards away from the marker. Third down coming up. Just kind of dinking and dunking, right? I mean, George is keeping everything in front, kind of like what Clemson has done. Nobody's able to get behind these defensive backs. Remember, that was a big question. Georgia lost seven defensive backs off of last year's roster. Few to the NFL, a couple to transfer, fucking seven. And so far, these defensive backs are holding up, including former Clemson Tiger Darian Kendrick at the bottom, number 11. Here comes the noise. Play clock at two. In the pocket. Intercepted. Jumping the route is Christopher Smith. A foot race. Can the quarterback catch him? He cannot pick six, Georgia. Uh, he's sitting right here. And I almost feel with all these short throws, I feel that Smith almost baited him. Does a good job of getting his eyes up, anticipating that throw on third down. He's right where the first down marker is. And then he's got the speed to get away from DJ and into the end zone. Great job of anticipating on third down by a safety in Smith, showing the instincts that makes him a really, really talented player. 
74 yards on the return with a junior from Atlanta. It's the first turnover in the college career of Uyangale, and it's the first points tonight. The Dogs' defense gets Georgia on the board. Thanks for having me. New season, new studio. I'm Kevin Nagani coming up on the Dish Halftime Report. The brilliance of Bryce Young as Bama rolls. We'll take a look. Also, Penn State and Oklahoma, their defenses survive. Highlights plus primetime performers. Booger McFarland joining me in studio. We'll see you in a matter of minutes. Chris, Herbie, back to you. You got a fancy house there. That's a good look. Yeah, it is. A lot of highlights to go over, too. Good job. Emphasizing more takeaways. It was not a strength of this defense a year ago. Only had nine picks last year. Smith's pick six, the first points of the game. Shipley will let it bounce over his head. Been a tough night. Just tuning in for DJ Uyunglele. First start of 2021. Seven of 12. Just indecisive. Now let's give Georgia a lot of credit here. This is a great defense. Can't run the ball. Offensive line is getting beaten up. But it's just it's just been the game feels like it's moving fast and here on a third down telegraphing facing the blitz and Smith steps in front of it for a touchdown and after this DJ tried to make the tackle you can see James Skowski starting middle linebacker on the other side one of the first ones down there say hey man let's go shake out of this that's what leaders do and it's good to see Skowski doing that but Dabo Sweeney told Holly Rowe we want to see how he responds not just to the good plays the bad plays. Well, here we go. His streak of pass attempts to begin his career before interception stopped at 128. And that's Rosemary Jack Saint. We talked about the receiver who was coming off a broken ankle last year on that kick coverage team. Holly? Well, guys, Christopher Smith, who had that nice interception return for a touchdown, one of the things his defensive coordinator said about him that I absolutely love, he's 5'11", 190, and he said he's a little dog that thinks he's a big dog, and he had some bite on that play. But what was hilarious is he came over to the sideline. Guys are trying to congratulate him, and they're trying to put those savage pads on him that they have that's their version of the turnover chain. Yeah. He, he couldn't get him on because he was sucking oxygen. He <laughs> had to take so much oxygen. They're stretching oh, him out on the sidelines right now. I saw it must have been cramping because yeah. they were stretching. Yeah, like you said, the Cavs, he wants to get back out there. I love an undersized, scrappy safety. And if you appreciate defensive football, what he did, Kirk, in that play, did his homework, studied tape, jumped the route, followed his instincts. Just a beautiful yeah. play. And he, and he knew he had to blitz on that side. And he knew that the ball was going to have to come out quickly. And he th anticipated that short, quick slant, and that glance route. He just jumped in front of it. Yeah, we'll see. Right away, Uyunglele responds. Got under three minutes to go before halftime. Right back to work. He threw it into traffic, and it was broken up. Intended for Galloway, and that's Lewis Seen, the safety. Boy, it looked like I, I thought Lewis Seen maybe got there a little bit early on this crossing route, trying to work behind the linebackers. It opens up, and if you look real close, 16, as he tries to get to that football, got of there a little bit early, gets away with it. DJ 7 of 13, 51 yards through the air. That's good protection and nice throw in the sideline. And God has got it for the second time out near midfield. And that gives you an idea of the arm strength and the accuracy. Again, he's trying to put that two ball in right between the corner and the safety, puts it on a line right where Nagata can go up and make a play on it and towards the sideline away from the defender. 24 yard gain. This would be enormous for Clemson. If they could answer that mistake, they will get the football to begin the second half. In traffic, play never really had a chance. They didn't. They didn't get to it, but they affected the throw. Yeah, one of the things that Nick Saban has always believed in, and, and, and you see it with Kirby Smart, we're seeing it tonight with Dan Lanning, is sitting back with two safeties to take away the vertical shots. You see, you know, sometimes it's not about the sack; it's just about affecting him and slowing and affecting the rhythm. But you sit back with two safeties, and they still can't run the football. That's a good night. That is a good night because it makes it hard to throw the ball. And if you're winning with that defensive line and those linebackers in the run game, you're winning as a defense.
Puts it off underneath his pace. And he's knocked down. You know the longest run they've had tonight, Kirk? It was a four yard gain after the fumbled staff. But we got to they scooped it up. That's the longest yeah. run from scrimmage tonight for Clemson. Yeah, and when you become one dimensional against a good defense, you become predictable. And they start to, like we saw in the previous drive, you, you start to anticipate what's coming because there's only so much you can do as a play caller. I mean, they wanted to run wide. They knew it'd be tough to run inside, but they wanted to at least run the ball, get the ball out of the perimeter. And that's all been shut down. Three for seven on third down tonight. You need four. Quick throw into traffic. Tough catch made by Angada. Pinballing around in there, somehow held on, moves it to the 35. Well, that is a great job of concentrating and holding on. His buddy, Darian Kendrick, the former Clemson Tiger, hit him as soon as he caught the football. But there's the hand strength of Nagata there. 6'3, 220 pounds holding on to that ball. They got their own California connection. Well, that comes from Folsom. And trying to reach out and make a one-handed grab on that sideline. Nagata, you know, he's had to be, battle through injuries over the last couple years, but this is what they've missed. And there's the size, 6'4", 250. Look at the hand strength. Gets hit as soon as he catches it, but a good job. By the way, he's running into the teeth of that secondary, not just Kendrick hitting him. So good concentration there. This drive feels like, I know it's late in the half, but a lot more urgency. They're, they're, they're more aggressive on this drive. They have the one timeout left. Pressure throws the ball to the ground. And they're checking to see if it was grounding. Jalen Carter knocked the quarterback down. No flag. And of course, as soon as I say that, he's indecisive because everybody's covered downfield. This is a coverage almost sack. He, he's looking to work to his left. He's really fortunate. He's able to get that ball away before Carter gets in there to bring him down. Georgia fans jumping around. They're beating on the drums here. And they, now it's third and ten. You go from a guy like Trevor Lawrence, all those games in three years, ability to work through progressions, to a guy who's very talented with a bright future, but still young. He's kind of locking in on receivers. And when they're not open, he starts to become very hesitant. Oh, ball hawking over there. It was Dan Jackson, the safety. He's reading that slant. It's fourth down. Yeah, his job is to just sit there and wait for anything coming into the middle or a crosser or a glance. And if that ball is thrown on the money, I think Jackson's able to step in front of that. And it's so different for Tony Elliott to call plays with a guy who's just had a couple starts last year from what he had with the first pick overall in the draft. The talent is tremendous. He's going to have a great career, as you said, but yeah, yeah. he is being put under duress tonight. Going for it on fourth and ten. And he was stomping his feet like crazy, trying to get the dogs to jump, and they wouldn't play a game. So now they'll bring the punt team out. Does it surprise you they didn't run a play? Try no, no, that? it's seven nothing, and, and Georgia has seven on a pick six. I mean, it's it's still or it's first half. Yeah. I mean, you you want to put Georgia back there, let them maybe work the clock and, and get off the field, down seven nothing. You go for that there, and you you don't get it. You give JT Daniels the ball at, at the plus forty at the very least. They're trying to get a field goal, so I think it's a no-brainer. You got to you got to punt this ball away. Well, it would have been their own, like their own 42, I guess. But. Yeah, but still, I mean, you're a couple completions. I get it. Got a first it's, it's a night for old school <laughs> decisions here. Yeah. Spires boots it up. Jackson gets out of the way, and everybody in Georgia just runs away. <laughs> no one was in with 30 yards of the football that time, and it's a touchback. They couldn't grab it. They were not going to make that same mistake. That's again. right. Let's go back to the bear for the Affleck answer. I got, I got nothing for you here. What do you got? Well, we asked tonight's Dr. Reed really question. Who is the last national like. champion to lose its season over inferring uh, eventual national champion? Got it back to 1983, the Miami Hurricanes. Blown oh, out, in Florida? Blown out by Florida ah. in the season over, then ripped off 11-0, of course, capped off by that uh, 
incredible Orange Bowl win over Nebraska. You Bear, be see, honest. He wants to feel better about the Miami loss. Yeah. Bear, Bear is a Miami alum. I mean, you, you thought it'd be competitive for a half today, right? You thought, you know, Bama's breaking in some new people. You thought it'd be competitive, right? Yeah, you thought it could be maybe be like that West Virginia opener a couple of years ago. Alabama maybe starts a little slow. Yeah. Then pours it on. But, yeah, that was uh, – that Alabama defense. Turns out Bryce Young yeah, and the that, boys that, that defense is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Why would anybody agree to play Alabama in one of those season opening games? I know it's nice for TV. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, why you guys say, say that, that man? <laughs> Cook knocked down after a short game. Dogs figure just to bleed this clock out. This is an aggressive pylon cam. Just nose over the plane there. Yeah, E.J. Williams with a good effort. Almost able to pin that. But yeah, Georgia's very content even though they have not scored an offensive touchdown in a field position defensive game to be up seven you figured it would be defensive but are you still a little surprised how yeah defensive it's been? yeah yeah been very surprised Tigers streak of scoring in the first half which was the longest in FBS will be broken 90 yards offense for Clemson and between the two teams you feel like Georgia and Todd Munkin have a little bit more traction I feel like Tony Elliott in the Clemson offensive staff, boy, they got to go back to the drawing board to try to figure out what they can do to try to move the ball against this defense. Christopher Smith accounting for all of the points in this first half. The 74 yard pick six, and the Dogs on top. Let's get into Holly Rowe with Kirby Smart. Coach, your defense has allowed just one yard rushing to Clemson in this first half. How do you describe the penetration and the pressure they're getting? Well, we got some good guys up front. They're doing a good job. They're doing some misdirection things. They're not really committing to the run either, so it's both ways. You guys had an offensive lineman go out early in this, and you've had to really switch people around. How can you get some running game going of your own? Well, we, we've hit some decent runs. We can't get explosive in the run game. we got to do a better job there. We lost Tate early. I don't know how bad it is. Warren Erickson, who has not practiced that much, has had to go in and guard. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Brandon and Marcus Tate, the guard who went out early. And both offensive lines, Kirk, have struggled mightily. Nothing close to an explosive offensive play for Georgia. Clemson will get the football to start the third quarter. End of 30 minutes in Charlotte. The Dish Halftime Report is coming up right after these messages. Kevin and Booker. To the Dish Halftime Report. Well, we knew it was going to be a close game, but not this close. Defense, the storybook. Yeah, nice little play there by the safety. Little undercut coverage, and DJ didn't see him. House call for the dog. Christopher Smith, 74 yards to the house. Georgia on the board, the only score. Look at this. Clemson had scored in the first half in 143 straight games, the longest active streak in the FBS. That streak is now over. Well, and the most surprising thing is the Clemson offense is playing not to lose. They need to open the offense up and allow DJ to throw the football down the field. Never seen a Clemson team play scared offensively. He's Booger McFarland. I'm Kevin Nagani. Welcome to our new studio. The one thing we were watching this game, it was like somebody doesn't want to make a mistake. Yes, instead exactly. Of be aggressive. And then DJ makes that one fatal mistake. And right now, Clemson is trailing. Uh, no mistakes for Alabama early <laughs> on and throughout the game. That is Bryce Young making his debut as a starter for the tie, the defending champs, number one in the land. And then this is what he can do. Move in the pocket and then find John Mechie. Look at the pocket presence of a veteran, and then Mechie does the rest. And then he's got some big men. Again, they lost five players in the first round on the offensive side in the NFL draft. Cameron Latou, big man, get off me. Would not be denied. Bama up 27-0 against the U. That defense coached by Manny Diaz. It was a long day in Atlanta for him. Jamison Williams. All right, you have the deep threat as well. Yeah, safety took Mechie. One-on-one -on -one over the top. Great throw by Bryce Young. And the rest, hey, dare I say, that's God-given talent. 344 yards in the air. Four touchdowns for Bryce Young. Hey, Nick is even smiling <laughs> in the leather. Hey. And Molly McGrath talking to the young quarterback. Bryce, your first start, and it was on a big stage, but you told us you didn't feel any pressure. What prepared you for this moment? Really the work we put in in the offseason. Um, I feel like we prepared so well. Saban had us ready. We had a really good game plan coming in, and we worked hard. We have a lot of trust in our staff, in our process, um, in our workouts. So for us, it, it wasn't really much pressure because we knew we put the work in. But when you see this graphic, it's just not fair because the three guys on the right, are going to be starting NFL games next weekend. 
different offensive coordinators, but it doesn't matter. They don't rebuild. They just reload. And the consistency of playing the Alabama offense, not their offense, but what Nick Saban wants them to do. Young in his debut, better than Mac, better than Tua, and better than Jalen Hurts in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> Too good. That's just not fair. Meanwhile, Texas A&M opening things up, hosting Kent State. Haynes King to Anais Smith. Good to see the young guy, Haynes King, come out. They have got to get ready because they got some big games coming up if they want to challenge in the SEC. And right now, that game on ESPNU, they're up 10 to 3. Meanwhile, Florida taking on Florida Atlantic SEC Network. Emory Jones, he's been in this offense for Dan Mullen. We've been waiting to see, and this is what he can do. That little pitch to Damian Pierce. Now, it's the Emory Jones offense. Is Dan Mullen going to tailor it to him like he did? He made sure he, he committed uh, at one point to Mississippi State. I will follow you wherever you yes, go. Yes. And right now, Florida is up. What a story here for South Carolina. How about Zeb Nolan, the grad assistant, now turned quarterback, played at Iowa State, played at South Dakota State, was ready for a coaching career. Well, tonight he's got four touchdowns. He's telling every grad assistant in America, start working out, jump on the Peloton, and get ready to go. Peloton's not going to help. <laughs> Come on, boy. It may help you. 29 nothing, South Carolina on ESPN Plus at home against Eastern Illinois. What a legend. The legend of Zeb Nolan. My goodness. Uh, Boog is watching this game closely. First ever meeting between LSU and UCLA to scoreless early on. Good thing, new defensive coordinator doing well after Bo Pelini's debacle last year. Okay, we got plenty of highlights coming your way, including some close ones in the Big Ten. More after this. This halftime report is presented by Dish, tuned into you. Welcome back to the Dish Halftime Report. Reminding you, we got Notre Dame, Florida State at Doak under the lights. That place will be hopping, thinking about the late great Bobby yeah. Bowden. Sunday night football, ABC. Action earlier today in Madison. How about Wisconsin and Penn State? The defenses were the story, but then they opened things up. Sean Clifford and Jahan Dotson. Yeah, nice movement in the pocket by Clifford, but just a blown coverage by Wisconsin. He's, Chris not going to be happy. Former Clemson running back Chez Malusi going in. We're tied at seven apiece. And in the fourth, tied at 10, Noah Kane, the power, boom. Yeah, nice run there. Expect Noah Kane to be the next great one at Penn State. They missed the extra point, so it's a six-point game. This cannot happen. It happened twice in the final three minutes. Graham Mertz picked off. Too many times. The Wisconsin offense could not execute in the red zone. Too many interceptions by Graham Mertz. Penn State, a year after starting 0-5, they are now 1-0. 16 straight home opening wins for Wisconsin. That streak comes to an end. As the Nittany Lions get the win. Iowa hosting Indiana long afternoon for Michael Penix. Riley Moss found a ton of real estate. When you throw it outside, Kev, one thing you better not be is late. House call. Pair of pick sixes and now for Iowa, who looked really good. A road trip to Iowa State, and that game's on ABC next weekend, and Iowa State surviving. 28, 8.5-point favorites against Northern Iowa. They win 16-10. to 10. Yeah, big one next week, and how about Cincinnati? Impressive for Ritter. Desmond Ritter, 295, four touchdowns. Meanwhile, Michigan, they looks like they have their own quarterback finally under Jim Harbaugh. Big W, 47-14 against Western Michigan. Oklahoma taking on Tulane. Remember, game moved to Norman due to Hurricane Ida. Spencer Rattler, the Heisman favorite, his touchdown to Mario Williams. Yeah, early on they got Spencer out of the pocket. He threw the pick early, but then he came back and made up for it. What is going on with Oklahoma's defense in the second half? Because Tulane had a chance on fourth and 13. Michael Pratt, uh, Fourth and 13, big guy, you can't dive seven yards. They would lose 40 to 35. Fantastic effort there for Tulane. Oklahoma surviving. Meanwhile, Steve Sarkeesian, his Texas debut. Bijan Robinson, best player on the field. Newsflash, Sark, when in doubt, give it to Bijan. Louisiana had all those returning starters on offense. A lot of people said keep an eye on this game. Maybe an upset special, but it's Texas. They win by 20. Hudson Card leading the way. USC, another game that said keep an eye on San Jose State, but Keaton Slovis to Taj Washington. Go up and get it, young man. USC would win this one 30-7. Yeah, USC. Slovis is going to have USC being something to reckon with in the Pac-12. Staying in the Pac-12 here. Uh, okay, Tavon Thibodeau. 
Uh, keep an eye on him. Mel Kuyper's number one on his big board for the 2022 draft. He had to leave the game, walking boot, but they would survive in Eugene over Fresno State. Yeah, he's the best player in America. They're going to need him when they go to the horseshoe to take on Ohio State. Hear that music? We got college football. September always brings the pennant races. Fantastic matchup tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. The NL West, Dodgers, Giants. That rivalry continues on ESPN. More after this, primetime performers. This halftime report is presented by Dish, tuned into you. Time now for our primetime performers from week one. Brooke, who you got? Kev, I'm going with a former walk-on from Michigan, Presbyterian quarterback Ren Hefley. Kev, I only had one touchdown in my career. He threw for 10 today. Come on. 38 for 50, 538. And guess what? When his arm got tired, he ran for 32 yards. This is a program that does not believe in punting. They put up 84 points. My primetime performers, 20-year-old Bryce Young, setting a school record for Alabama in his first career start. 344 yards, four touchdowns against the Blitz, 12 of 18 with three touchdowns. And that's what really stood out for me from our week one and watching all the games. This young man and this offense, they lose five first round picks on the offensive <laughs> side and the machine continues to roll on. They don't rebuild, they just reload, Kevin, mm-hmm. into exclusive. For me, I'm going to Norman, Oklahoma, the Heisman favorite preseason, the number two team in America, the Oklahoma Sooners. Thought it was gonna be a cakewalk. Mm-hmm. It was anything but. That defense in Norman still has to get better under Alex Grinch. Almost 400 yards of offense to two lanes and 35 points. They better tighten up in Norman. Yeah, you started to wonder what was going on in that yeah. second half, right? A little bend, but they did not break mm. in the end. The Sooners survived to open up the season with the victory on their home turf. Second half coming your way after this. Dish. to Charlotte, the Duke's Mayo Classic on ABC, presented by Capital One. Hard-hitting game, two aggressive defenses. The offenses have not scored. A pick six by the Dogs has them on top. Chris Fowler, Kirk Kerbstreet, Holly Rowe. Old school, <laughs> back to the first meeting in, what, 1897 here. Georgia's longest play from scrimmage, 12 yards. They've got the lead. Thumbs is going to get the ball first, Kirk. What do both offenses have to do to get some traction here? Well, JT Daniels is going to have to take some shots downfield. He's 13 to 16, but it's just been a lot of short uh, throws to try to complement their running game. And it's it's been effective to a degree, but they're not putting points on the board. So they got to take some shots with with what's happening with Clemson. I've said all along, I think DJ has got to run the football. They've got to implement. They can't win the line of scrimmage. You got to run DJ. And then at some point, you, you got to try to see if he can take to himself try to get some rhythm and some tempo because when they got aggressive it seemed to take away some of the aggressiveness of the Georgia defense they were setting the tone a little bit more so I think more tempo and you got to get some QB run going the best plays have been targets to Joseph and got he's made some tough catches in traffic he has just weird to see in the post ETN era zero zero running game now Tigers no and that offensive line Kind of picking up where they left off it against Ohio State. They've been whipped up front. Take a look at the Modelo fighting spirit moment. This is after Clemson got the ball at midfield. Play of the half. It's the only points on, on the board. Christopher Smith made that jump on a third down. He felt the blitz, see the blitz in front of him, expected the ball to come out right at the first down marker, and jumped it. Got his eyes up just in time. Knew the ball would be coming, stepped in front of the receiver, and then outran DJ into the end zone for the only touchdown of this game. Now let's see these adjustments that Tony Elliott and the staff have made. First turnover in the career of Uyangalale. Two games as a starter and other games mop up last year for Trevor Lawrence. Pace is the back. Enough in the middle, nothing doing. Holly. Well, guys, while Dabo Sweeney was coming down the tunnel to get back onto the field after halftime, he said, how about that heavyweight fight out there? It has been such a fun fight, but he wants his quarterback, DJ Uy 
Jungle LA to calm down a little bit. He's like, DJ's just got to settle down, and we've got to communicate better. That pick was on Ross. He didn't run the right route there. He said, DJ's just got to quit overthrowing people, settle down. And he said, you know, really the MVP in this game has been the punter. We've got to get better field position. Second and nine, batted down at the line of scrimmage. You buy that? It's on the receiver, not the quarterback? No, I think it's a coach trying to take care of his young quarterback who's got a bright future. As Steve hits a line, continues to anticipate and kind of feel things out. At the time, Devontae Wyatt, one of the leaders up front of that defense, 95, almost playing like a linebacker that time. Couldn't get to DJ, so he just got up and knocked it down. The yeah, second time he's done that tonight, they counted as one of the havoc plays. They keep charting and they've created plenty of havoc in the first 30 minutes. Lots of shifting and moving on both sides pre-snap. Late clock at five. Here comes late pressure. And again, misfiring. A late flag came in. They were targeting Ross. Dean was closely covering and maybe too closely. Wow. Wow, I feel like I feel like uh, Clemson catches a break here. Justin Ross. Defense number 17. The route, the route didn't even get to the to the first down marker, but he did grab the shoulder at the out when he came out of his break. Dean is guilty of grabbing onto the shoulder. And he touched the shoulder. I don't know if that's pass interference. Got a feel for Justin Ross again. We told you his story in the first half. Imagine just being back out there after having just barely been clear for contact. Two spinal surgeries. He's got to feel a little surreal for him, and he hasn't really looked like the Justin Ross of 18 or 19 yet. Well, he doesn't have Trevor good. Lawrence throwing an ETM oh. behind Fair Trevor point. Lawrence. <laughs> so, first down after the penalty. This is Shipley, a true freshman. That qualifies as a as a big play for the running game tonight. Wyatt on the stop. You know, I, I think besides the obvious, where the defensive line is playing great and, and the linebackers flying, I think they just look really, really well prepared. For a first game, Dan Lanning, the defensive coordinator, and Kirby Smart, they 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 have these guys expecting certain plays, putting them in position to make plays. Late pressure again. DJ on the move has to just throw it away. You got Lanning. You got obviously Kirby Smart defensive mentality. Will Muschamp's helping out, so a lot yeah. of defensive brain power over there. Yeah, absolutely. Again, there come the backers again. Backers are getting through. They're getting penetration. He just tries to buy time and, and just get rid of it. It's Dean again. Boy, Dean, we've seen Dean and Walker both blitzing a lot. Guards and tackles not able to pick them up because of the suddenness, and they're occupied with defensive linemen. Boy, Dan Lanning is dialing up tonight. Big Cinco, as they call it. 0 for Cinco. Five straight incompletions. They need seven on third down. Four man rush. Gets it out. And again, it's in God of it. Left them alone there. Quarterback spots him first down in midfield. Yeah, that, that's a little bit surprising. You have a true freshman in Ringo, and I don't know if there's a miscommunication there, but I was shocked that, that he dropped. He was up tight, and then at the snap of the ball, he drops back. You had a couple defenders, and nobody and it makes it really easy for quarterback and receiver on third down. Not much has been easy. No, that, that time was it easy. was. Yeah. Here's a little reverse, Ross. Takes the scoop and he is knocked down after a five yard gain as Elliott looks for those kind of wrinkle plays to throw off that pursuit. Over the years, I want you to think about this Artavis Scott, Hunter Renfro, Amari Rogers. These receivers are tall, they're outstanding, but there's always been a shifty slot receiver in this offense when they've been great. It just feels like it's missing right now. To offset just the, the, the more lean, the, le the longer lean receiver. Fake pitch, drop behind the line. Once again, that's big Jordan Davis, his hometown team, making a tackle. Well, you, you got a young, young guard coming down to try to make a block there, and that's a tough ass. Marcus Tate, 74, see him work down, and he, I mean, he's a true freshman trying to block Jordan Davis who thought about going to the NFL and ended up ended up coming back to play more college football. That is a 350 pound man run a sub 540 and a 30 plus inch vertical jump. Crazy. And a cerebral guy. Yep. Too. Third and seven again. We angle sacked again. The Kobe Dean's been a nightmare tonight. 
They just, they're just going to keep dialing it up. They're going to keep pulling these linebackers until you stop them. I mean, especially on third down, they're, they're shooting different gaps. They've been coming on the right side quite a bit, affecting the communication. And, you know, Dean comes free, but give those big defense alignmen who are slanting and angling a lot of credit because they're eating up those linemen. And then you see Dean coming around behind that, effectively rushing the quarterback. Tigers run eight plays, get a break, and then pass interference call, but have to punt it away again. Jackson waves his hand and makes the fair catch at the 12-yard line. Still nothing for that Clemson offense so far. 43-yard punt. Georgia takes over from the 12. JT Daniels. Look how quick he's getting the ball out tonight. And, and, and again, look how short these throws are. He's 13 to 16, so he's, he's been effective. He's been efficient. You know, here's, here's probably one of his better throws to the freshman, Bowers, but Clemson's doing everything they can to keep everything in front of them. First down incompletion on the edge there, trying to get the ball to Mitchell, Booth in coverage. Got to be careful down here. You know, Clemson's offense is struggling. Defense would love to spark it with a takeaway if you're Daniels. Just where one or two mistakes are going to decide this thing yeah, tonight. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be a game of these quarterbacks trying to avoid that disastrous play. We've already seen Uyungle make one of them. White patiently picks his way. That's a nice run. Followed some blocks. Moves the six to the 25. And he follows Fitzpatrick. Does a nice job. Really good job on an outside stretch play. But they've got the speed to get wide. Tough to get wide and get outside of Clemson. And that Georgia tempo. They flip it off to the freshman tight end. Bowers bounces off a man. Spector knocked him down short gain. How nice about, debut for this tight end. How about Bowers? I mean, he's been playing high school football and tonight because of the entry to Washington. He gets a lot of opportunities. He had a great camp. One of the great stories that they said. Of, of, of all the freshmen and I don't know if he anticipated getting this many opportunities tonight even though he had that great camp there's some running back in high school as well as tight end and, and Napa it's not one of the areas of California that's known for being a, a powerhouse producing that's no, where you go to prospect. where you go to drink your wine right indeed <laughs> <laughs> this guy's another Californian from Fresno Kendall Milk. it's amazing how well they do it's a national brand, Georgia. They go to California for a lot of key guys. Holly? Well, that's right. Brock Bowers out of Napa is really talented, guys. He's really smart. That's what's helped him get on the field. 4.33 GPA in high school. But how about this? He was a triple option quarterback his freshman year. He played outside linebacker, defensive end, returned kicks, and punts. Last year, played wide receiver and running back. He's literally played everywhere on the field, so yep. I think that's why he was able to pick up this offense. You know, quickly. Holly, there's a message there for parents. The versatility, playing all those positions has allowed him now to be a tight end where he's a better athlete. Third and eight, Tigers bring some pressure. It's picked up, and it's intercepted. Spectre stepped in front of the receiver. And it's Clemson's defense turn to make a play. You had a feeling, you had a feeling that mistake might be coming. Yeah, and I think JT Daniels got fooled because he thought Spectre might stay to the inside on the tight end. He's right here. Tight end works here. He kind of sinks, and then he works to the outside. I think JT Daniels is thinking he's going to stay with this tight end, which should open things up out here. Instead, watch what Spectre does. Works out to the outside, fools JT Daniels, and comes up with a big turnover that the Tigers need. So Clemson will take over at the 33, trying to finally find the end zone to tie this football game. All right, this is, this is what you've wanted. Uwe Ungalale, this is, this is their opportunity. It's been a tough night for this offense, but Spectre gives them great field position. You got to come away with points. Option look, Shipley on the pitch. Dogs close it down quickly and knock him down after a three yard gain. Nolan Smith on the stop. Well, if he's going to run that speed option, he's got to attack the defensive end, Nolan Smith. You're pitching off of Nolan Smith. You can't, you can't pitch off of him and then allow Nolan Smith to go out and make the play. The option is about taking that defensive end. Nolan Smith commits to you, then you pitch. 
DJ didn't run too much option in St. John Bosco. No, no. But again, in this offense, they got to throw that rank coin. Pressure is picked up, trying to buy time, and now he can't escape. There was good coverage. Eventually, the rush got to him. It's Jalen Carter. Fourth sack tonight for the dogs. This play kind of sums up what's happened tonight with some of the inexperience. You've got a couple guys running the exact same route in the same exact area. That's not good. And it affected the rhythm and the confidence that he had. He's really struggling to come off primary. Look at these guys. There's no one open. You got two guys standing next to each other, nowhere to go with the football, and he's having a hard time working from his first to second to third option. He's locking on primary. If it's not there, he's in trouble. Third and 16. Are they going to squander this great field position? Sucked again. Relentless pass rush. They swarm him. Adam Anderson. His turn to eat. They get pressure this time without blitzing. You know, if you're a Georgia fan, you're enjoying seeing the linebacker play tonight. Anderson is over here. Smith is over here. It's to the right this time. Anderson, we saw Smith early come up with a, a big sack, and this time you get an idea of what Georgia can do to a quarterback if you hold on to the football too long. Kirk, three plays after the pick. They lose nine yards and fall out of field goal range. Not only do they not tie the game with a touchdown, they get no points out of this. Best they can hope for is Spires is able to knock the punt dead deep and pin Georgia back. Not a real good job. Jackson up to make the fair catch at the 14. That dog's pass rush, the story here tonight. The Duke's Mayo Classic, presented by Capital One on ABC, is brought to you by DoorDash. Get more from your neighborhood. And Marathon, driven forward. DJ Shockley back in that 0 2 game was like a situational quarterback. David Green was the starter. He electrified and rescued Georgia. Dodged the upset against the Tigers back in 0 2. And I want to go back to this last play. Let's roll it real quick, and I want you to see what happens. It's a third down. They're playing man under. Look how it opens up. Clemson quarterbacks have got to see that and take off. Now, he's a young guy. I understand that. But that threat is so big in this offense, and Georgia doesn't fear it. And I don't even think right now at this stage of his career, it's even on the mind of DJ. And Georgia knows it. See what JT can do. Defense bailed him out. Pick didn't cost him any points. Milton bounces it. Lowers the shoulder. Excuse me, that's uh, White making the run and tackled eventually by Charleston. Much to push here by the left side of this offensive line. They do a good job creating. He's just kind of looking, following that double team, find that seam, a little jump cut, outstanding block by Fitzpatrick. And that's what springs him. But it was the vision and the patience that time by White that allowed him freed him up to get it in those big yards. By far, George's best running play tonight. That's nice. James Cook takes his turn at tailback. They fake it to him. Daniels over the middle. Catch made. Jalen Johnson down in that depth chart, but he makes a big play to the 43 of the Tigers. A little play action. Watched it freeze the linebackers. They bite up. Creates a nice little hole in the backside right behind there. Boom. Nice throw. Different receivers, that's Cook the back, getting a chance to make an impact tonight again with Pickens and Blaylock not there. Darnell Washington, the pass catching tight end, not a factor. Kyrus Jackson doesn't quite look 100% either, so other guys are having to step in. Yeah, Kyrus Jackson really just being used on punt return, so that's where the versatility of some of these guys, their ability to catch the ball out there, not just run the ball, it's so big, but you run the ball, it sets that play action. Again, that's Todd Monken and what he wants to do with this offense this year. Make those linebackers have to freeze and respect that fake. Creates good openings behind that zone. On the reverse, Johnson has a couple blockers, makes a cut, takes a big hit there from Spectre, but three yards short of the marker. You know, this secondary, for the most part, has been doing a good job of holding up without their, their leader, Nolan Turner. You know, he's not back there, not playing, and 
they've, they've required others to have to step up and they've been rotating a lot of different bodies. I mean, we have seen Trenton Simpson, for example, bounce all over the place. That time he was back at safety. They move him up now to play kind of that nickel spot. Turner, their top tackler from a year ago, has a hamstring issue. He's played up so much football. Milton knifing through. Here comes a flag, a big collision. So first down, but we'll check the marker was from the defensive backfield. Landon Xander slammed into the running back. Well, they're getting outside now in this drive a little During bit. During the run, holding offense number nine, ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. We'll repeat third down. And they got the receiver Justin Robinson on the hold. And he's trying to get out in front right here. Yep. Locks up 21 green. But they did a little pen and pull in that condensed formation. The tight end Bowers just locking the edge, freeing it up to get to the outside. Again, twice now in this drive, they've been able to have some of their better runs. That time, obviously, the hold, but if you, the hold didn't have a whole lot to do with the success of that play. Spot foul. Now to be third and seven. High snap. Daniels gets the ball out quickly. McIntosh fighting. And it's a first down. That was some tough running from the running back. You just said this, Chris. Kyrus Jackson and some of these injuries, they're not out there. So you're, you're asking receivers to go out here and, and be slot receivers, running backs to be slot receivers. And, and that's where you can see, again, that the versatility of a guy that can go out there and, and do that. And you've had all camp to try to work it. But Georgia very fortunate to be healthy enough at running back to move some of these guys their third and fourth strength out and play that slot receiver. It's a great point. Georgia nowhere near the full arsenal weapons. When these guys get healthy later in the year, look out. But right now they're trying to make do and asking guys to play different roles. This is McIntosh, the familiar running back position. They're starting to get downhill now. Yeah, you, you knew after a couple times we've seen this that they're going to go back to this. So using that, again, that condensed formation. They're bringing everybody in using different bodies. That time they tried to use Burton to kind of seal it and then get Bowers out to the outside with McClendon, the right tackle. And it, it, have, you, have we seen them all night have running lanes? No, we haven't until really to this drive. This is the first real true drive tonight by either team. They've moved it 63 yards. Again, play action off of that now sets it up. Safeties and linebackers start getting caught up worrying about run. Take it to White. Lob it to the edge and no chance. Here comes the flag. Mitchell was being grabbed by Sheridan Jones. Pretty much a no brainer on the on the call this time. Mitchell a freshman. <laughs> Jones just, just completely Peterson. locked Defense him up and six. grabbed onto him there. For both passing games, pass the interference calls have been among their most effective plays tonight. That's right. I mean, but it moves the ball inside the 10. First and goal, Georgia trying to make this a two score game. The way this game has felt, you talk about a, a red zone, the importance of red zone for a defense to try to bow up. Touchdown here with the way this their offense has played could be devastating for Clemson. Play action, Daniels flips it, and was it tipped at the line? It was. Xavier Thomas, three. Climb the ladder. You know, he, he had such a troubled season in 2020 with COVID and uh, just, just, just really was not able to contribute the way he had hoped and went up to 100, 290 pounds, dropped back down, got over COVID, 265 pounds, has had a great offseason, a great camp, is locked in, and that time not necessarily getting to Daniels, but that time, if he doesn't get a hand on that, that's, that's some yardage there for Georgia. Three receivers to the left on second down. They get it back into the boundary there. And Burton into traffic gets down inside the five. Goodrich on the tackle. Third and goal. That's, that's, a, that's a simple play that you're going to get the ball to a, a guy that can be dangerous with the ball in his hands. And you got a couple tight ends in front of him that are, that are picking up some good blocks. And Clemson able to get off of those blocks and keep him out of the end zone. Remember, we just said pivotal point in the game for the Clemson defense. That's a huge four point play potentially. White's the back.
Daniels looking right. Launches into heavy traffic. Broken up there. A dangerous throw. Brock Bowers was being bracketed that time. It's fourth down. By the, the Makuba looked like he might be able to come up with an interception. And you're right, sure. That, that was heavy traffic that he threw that in there. Skowski was back there as well. He had two different receivers running into the same area. Can't really tell who he's trying to get it to. I don't know if he's trying to get to the, the, the bigger Bowers, who, who really gets his hands on the ball. He did. He, he somehow, boy, he got up. He did, but, but Smith didn't do him any favors. His teammate kind of yeah. knocked it into him as he was trying to grab the ball. Four guys within a phone booth, basically. But the Tigers do get the stop. But Lesney missed earlier. This chip shot crucial from 22 yards to make it a 10-point game. And he drives it through. First long drive of the night. 11 plays, 81 yards, 10 zip dogs. This is studio now to our Dr. Pepper Fansville studio update the Pasadena LSU season opener. Herbie's high on UCLA. Dorian Thompson Robinson to Greg Dulcich, the big man down the sidelines. Two men to beat. He does 75 yards. Chip Kelly's Bruins up 14 to 7. Chris, back to you. I keep telling you, Kirk, this UCLA. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. I, I mean, I'm jumping up and down watching that highlight, Kevin. That's pretty good. Boy, it's nice to see the UCLA, the powder blue and the gold. If they no. can, Kelly can get them going. If they win today. Fun for the sport. They win today, man. Fourth year he's been there. I, I just thought it could be the year they get it going. It's a short kick, and Chip is going to have a chance from the five. And the freshman knocked down to the 23. Well, for us, part of return to normalcy is having the All-State bus and Curtis Wilson back on the job. Here he is in Charlotte. What's your All-State celebration moment today? Well, we've been watching football since Thursday night. We watched it yesterday, watched it a lot today. I think this game in Madison, it's a tough ask for Penn State to go on the road, Camp Randall, sold out. I don't care if it was pretty or it wasn't. That is a great win. Think about how last year started in Bloomington. Remember that play that was reviewed? Oh, yeah. Phoenix get in, did he not? Ended up being a devastating loss they've struggled to recover from. This time, they find a way to win it on the road. So that's the big celebration. Tremendous defensive effort on the road. Riangalale now, a little extra urgency, Kirk, now that they're down double digits here. That's Galloway making the catch for a short game. Yeah, quick throws, get the ball out. Again, I, what I've seen tonight from him, this guy has tremendous upside. We know about his future, but he's still a young guy, and he's struggling right now to come off primary if it's covered and work through it. And also, the offensive line has struggled at the line of scrimmage. Here comes pressure again. They block Dean that time. A flag comes in. They might have held him to block him. And now another flag comes in late. A lot of Isle time, laundry on that, the field. That could be a chop block. Once you're engaged with a defender and then you go underneath, you submarine him. That, that's a problem. Kobe Pace, the back is think, the man. That they Pace are. is Personal actually foul, chop block yeah. offense number 65 and 20. Pace is, Pace is the one that submarine committed the foul. You see the blitz right here. And once he gets locked up, you'll see 20 submarine. Brockhorse does a good job right there trying to hold up. And then you, once you're engaged and another offensive player goes down low, it's a, a chop block and a personal foul. And it's been hard to try to stop Dean from getting in there tonight. That time they oh, he's broke the rules to do it. You know, they, we, we watched him last year. We knew what he could do. I just feel like with Monty Rice out of the middle, his leadership and his playmaking ability, it's just it's his turn, right? Yep. He's, he's going to a different level. And again, if you're a Georgia fan watching 17 right now, you've loved him, and now you're, you're really starting to appreciate. Remember, this guy's a leader. This guy's at a, a very different level. He's a 4.0 yep. engineering student. You know, coaches will say, we're watching film, and he's like, well, I got a, a big engineering test tomorrow. It's like, oh, well. You do you, man. You go, you go do your he, thing. He uses part of the brain power on the football field, too. Oh, absolutely. Serious leader and a tremendous athlete. Second and 18, Louis Angelale hesitation and just plows forward for four or five yards. Holly? Well, you're talking about how smart Nicobe Dean is. I talked to him this week about his academic workload. He's actually taking a machine design class and mechanical engineering level 200 classes right now. He's doing that in addition to his football work. And you can just see how smart he is out here on the field. He's telling everybody else what to do. I've seen him correct guys several times. 
He also knows the angles. I just think there's something in that engineering ah, smart that's go. helping him. <laughs> uh, he, he is not only leading Holly tonight, he's he's been the dynamic playmaker, blitzing often and, and finding those creases to get into the backfield. Well, they got him third and 14. No protection again. Seth off the edge. Trayvon Walker joining the party. A sixth sack. And they do a little a little twist stunt from inside and outside the left side of Clemson's offensive line right here struggles. You'll see it work in and then on the outside he's able to work back into the middle affecting the communication and ends up getting in. Kirk, it's shocking. I mean, all the years the Tigers the stars come and go. The production doesn't dip. They have 92 total yards tonight. Will you subtract all the yards from those sacks? 92 or almost done with the third quarter. Spires boots it from the goal line. Jackson drifting back to his 39. Side steps some traffic. A flag comes in on the return, which figures to spoil the field position. They would have had the ball in Clemson territory. We'll check the marker with 10 seconds left in the third quarter. Georgia has run 44 plays tonight. Clemson the same number. During their turn, illegal block in the back. Return team number seven. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down, Georgia. This is a little bit like NFL football. The, the number of plays. Speaking of Sunday, it's college football. The Fighting Irish, ranked number nine. Jack Cohn, the ex-Badger, taking over at quarterback. Visiting Tallahassee at 7.30 Eastern time. And then on Monday, Labor Day, back to Atlanta. Louisville Cardinals and the Rebels of Ole Miss. You'll be there along with Reese Davis on that call. ACC teams involved five consecutive days from Thursday to Monday. Yeah, yeah. Lane Kiffin now with, with COVID, he will not be able to be there to be uh, to be able to coach in person. So we'll see how that impacts that game. We talked about the Penn State game for so many years. It's been championship teams playing explosive offense. 50 points a game, LSU, these Clemson offenses, Alabama. You felt that 21 might be a much more defensive year. We're seeing early signs of it. Why? Yeah, I, I just thought before the season started, that would be my trend this year. And it has everything to do with COVID restrictions a year ago. It impacted defenses more than the offense. They didn't have spring ball. Defense is about continuity, playing together, being with each other. And they couldn't do it a year ago. This year they can. Daniels rolls out, finds Bowers again. And the young tight end is having a heck of a debut. First down near midfield. Yeah, he snuck behind James Skowski. All of a sudden, starting to see this quarterback, JT Daniels, starting to find some answers to this athletic defense. So that has a lot to do with outside. They're starting to attack outside of the run game and outside on play action. Six catches for Bowers. He's been the featured guy. 15 minutes to play in Charlotte. 10 nothing Georgia. Back after this message and a word for your local ABC station. This season, Taco Bell welcoming back one of the best parts of college football, the student sections. The Moss Student Section of the Year contest has returned. ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see how your school can compete. Beginning of the final quarter, Dogs from their 48, up 10. And off inside to White. Who I'm excited about, Kirk. The return of all the things around the games that were missing last year. Both fans out here putting on a great halftime show. The commitment that these folks make. You know, they, they practice and train like football players do. I know it's a little different, but the commitment isn't different. I'm a, I, I'm a marching band guy. I mean, I, I, love, I love the marching bands, and I think it's one of the things that, again, separates college football. You know, it, the, the, the college football, it's a sense of community, the tailgating, the student bodies, the, the cheerleaders, the band. That, Boy, did we miss that. Soundtrack yeah. wasn't here last year. Oh. And they're trying to pound away the middle. This is White for a short gain. It's going to be third and four. Specter on the stop. This Clemson defense is doing everything they can to keep them in this football game. But at this stage of the game, down by 10. Not only are they trying to hold up on third downs for Brent Venables, they're, they're, you know, they're trying to create a turnover. I mean, they did it once, and the offense wasn't able to capitalize, but Almost feels like the only way Clemson's going to score tonight is the defense is going to have to make a play. If you count that punt that touched a man's foot, that's that's technically a turnover. Yeah, They've yeah. got nothing out of the two takeaways yeah. at all. And they had great field position both times. That's true. 
Daniel swarmed and sacked. This time it's the Clemson pass rush getting after the quarterback. Big Miles Murphy like a freight train. Yeah, they, they bring pressure, and Murphy's going to work all the way around. Man to man, Brett Venables is playing a lot of zone. And this time he brings a twist of his own. Poor communication up front. I think it surprised them. He hasn't shown a lot of that kind of pressure, but at this stage of the game, we just talked about running out of time, need a stop, need a big play, and they get it from Murphy. The Georgia fans would be excited that we're now in the fourth quarter. That's the first sack that they've given up to this Clemson pass rush. Tigers does their job, though. The defense does its job getting off the field. And Taylor makes the fair catch. Once again, though, not good field position. Rui Angelale. This week's college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation. This is the AP poll. I said earlier that I think the winner of this game, great chance to move up to number two. Oklahoma escaping against Tulane. Yeah, I think Oklahoma it was almost like they, they got up big and then they, like last year, they took their foot off the gas and almost caught them. Alabama was just at a different level. All the teams that played, they, they looked incredible. All right, Clemson, how many more possessions will they get? Down 10, backed up, pass rush again. Uyangalale escapes. At least he doesn't get trapped behind the line, able to get about four. He just reminds me of a young guy who's who's mine you know sometimes you watch a guy like like a trevor lawrence or a or joe burrow and the game looks like it's slow like the game is slowed down this is an example where the game is fast it's almost in fast forward the coverage everything he's seeing it's happening so fast it's and against a good defense it's a bit overwhelming for him off the play action back pedals delivers underneath but they are all over Tight end there, Tyndall. And there, there's just nothing that's threatening this defense downfield. They're sitting back with two safeties, nothing at all. So it allows these linebackers and the safeties to let them hit these little dinks and dunks and then just rally. Let them make the catch. Use your athletic ability. Well, they're three for 12 on third down, and five of Georgia's six sacks have come on third down. Is the pressure going to come from out here, or is the pressure going to come from the backers? Then Jay Dixon, had not had a touch tonight, is now in the game at running back. Oh and oh ball start. Now it's going to get even tougher on third down, Kirk. They didn't hear the whistle. Ended up knocking down the quarterback. Caught a break there on the false start. Dabo's upset because they hit his quarterback. They did. They didn't hear the whistle. Yeah. Part of the snap. Start offense number 71. Five yard penalty. I mean, is this just a great opponent? Should Tigers fans be extremely alarmed with this offensive line going uh, forward? The, the, the offensive line was the question coming into this year and after that Ohio State game, and it continues to be the concern. You know, you got to build continuity and you got to find some guys that can handle a pass rush. The thing is, how often are they going to see this kind of defensive line and linebackers the rest of the season? In the ACC. The well, third down was a nightmare in that game against the Buckeyes that you mentioned, and has been again tonight. Now they need nine. Allen comes in motion, two by two. Rangale from the pocket delivers downfield, and running free is in Gata, and that's the huge play they needed. They were in Georgia territory. Yeah, a great job by Nagata getting off the coverage there by Kendrick. But it was the offensive line. We keep being critical of the line. They're not helping out. That time, Georgia doesn't blitz. They just bring three. It allows the offensive line to give the big fella enough time. And it, the one receiver that's been able to get some separation is Agata, and he comes up with a clutch catch on third down. Yeah, his seventh tonight, that one for 44 yards. Dixon, the veteran of this running back, four. Waited a long time to get involved tonight. Scoots for another first down. And also just good vision. That play was designed as an inside zone play, and it's just taken away. Remember how tough it is? We talk about the run between the tackles. He's trying to get the ball up in the middle. Right away, he sees he can't get in there, but he bounces it outside of Walker Parks, the right tackle, and he's got speed. So the vision and the speed, one of the better runs of the game after that big completion to Ngata. They follow it up with a nice run that time by Dixon. That's their longest run tonight of 10. Oh. 
Pump fake to the edge, throw across the middle. It's high. Gathering it in is Allen. Ball looked like it was deflected. Uh, he, he's trying to get him to, to chase Dixon, try to get those linebackers out of position, and then work back to the middle. And Chris, you're, you're right. I think that ball was deflected, trying to work it back over across the middle where those backers had left to try to chase down the fake. But uh, good focus and concentration by Davis Allen to get uh, the eight yards. Tigers starting to get some rhythm now. Chunks of yardage, finally. Second and two, out quickly. Catch made on the edge by Ladson. Speedy receiver takes a shot. He'll move the six again to the 20. And that time you saw Brini on a blitz. It's actually exactly what Clemson wanted. He came from the field to the left. There he is right there. He's coming on the blitz. Get it out quick, which they do. It's two on two. You got to make better blocks. You got to give Ladson a chance. Give Kendrick, a former Clemson Tiger, credit getting off of that block and making a tackle just for a short game. They pick up a first down, but it could have been a big game with two on two out there. This time, plenty of time. Louis Angelale shows the arm strength and an absolute wrestling match. Ringo just tackled Ladson in the end zone. That's a true freshman out on an island. And as you said, I don't think that ball was had a chance to Ladson, but his instincts were to just try to bring the receiver down, which is not good to do, obviously, in coverage. It's a tough matchup That's on the edge. Here. Defense, number five. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. So Clemson marching deep into the red zone for the first time tonight. Progressive pylon for him. Shows you another angle. That's a nice takedown. It's two points. And they the moved, they've moved the ball. Now you have to punch it in. You got to give you know nine and a half minutes to go. Feels like doesn't it feel like they're down 30? It's 10 nothing. It's 10 nothing. At nine and a half minutes to go. They moved it 82 yards. Take it to Dixon. Uyangale has to just throw it away again. Smart. Nothing but traffic. Two receivers next to each other. Two DBs and Smith, who had the pick six, came on the pressure that time. Little smoke and mirrors. You know, you got Justin Ross going in, in motion. Everything's covered. That's a great decision. Great decision. Instead of trying to force something and trying to be impatient, I got to try to force the throw in. Uyangale that time just throws it away to live for this next down. He's a big dude. We haven't seen many design quarterback I, runs here at the five yard I line. I keep asking, for, I mean, especially down here. How many times to Sean, Taj Boyd, Trevor? Down here, that's what they did. UB run. Instead, he drops back from the pocket, throws a slant into traffic. It's broken up nicely. It was Greeny stepping in front of Ladson. It'll be third and goal. Well, that is really good coverage by the senior. Kind of playing him from the inside out. And as soon as he got to that back line, Brini gets his head turned, waiting for that ball to be thrown. It gets inside underneath him so he doesn't have pass interference and sees that football. Man, that was good. One of those crucial potential four point plays. Can the Tigers find the end zone? Empty backfield. Georgia defense all spread out. No pressure on I'm going to lay it first. They bring pressure late. He just chucks it out of the end zone. Excellent, excellent job by the dogs in tight after giving up the big plays. I thought they put the flag up, but I think it might have been a shoe. Looked like a flag, but I think it's just a shoe from the Clemson wide receiver. You're right, Chris. Georgia hunkers down. Sure did. Inside that right about the five yard line. They spread cover. across the field. Yeah. And, and and the plays, the plays there again, you taken away QB run. Georgia didn't even think about having to defend that. Makes it really tough to try to throw the ball against that group, that secondary. BT Potter from 22 to get the Tigers on the board. Does his job. Not what they were looking for. 10 plays, 82 yards, but it's back to a seven-point game. 9-0-8 to play in Charlotte. The Duke's Mayo Classic on ABC.
is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And in part by Zaxby's, featuring fresh made chicken tenders, wings, and salads. Pumped up for Ames, Iowa, Kirk College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Set there to set the stage for that in state rivalry, Hawkeyes and Cyclones, a top 20 matchup. Yeah, you know, I think Iowa State, just one of those things they had to get through this week to get to next week's showdown, a big rivalry game. And the Hawkeyes, boy, they look great from work go today on both sides of the ball. That'll be a huge matchup in Ames. You know, from Taj Boyd, Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence, Kelly Bryant, when he was the quarterback briefly as well. Quarterback runs a huge part. Quarterback was 250 pounds. They had a first and goal at the five. Yeah. It's been a huge part of the offense. That's why, that's why you keep for asking you. For 10 years. I keep, first series, I was like, how are they going to use him running the ball? We haven't seen it at all tonight, especially once you get inside the 10-yard line. Georgia's playing all that man coverage. Nobody's accounting for the quarterback. Well, Sunday night baseball, part of the... Labor Day weekend sports calendar in San Francisco. Now two teams in the LA or NL West battle it out. Dodgers Giants, a great rivalry since the beginning of time, since they are both in the New York area. It's all presented by Taco Bell, 7 Eastern, also on the app. I know you're big with tennis these uh, last few weeks. I'm big with baseball. I'm a Reds <laughs> fan, yep. and it's been a long time since I've been watching meaningful baseball in the month of September. Reds, for all of you that are concerned, they won 7-4 tonight. They're a half game up on a Padres in the last wild card spot. So keep an eye I'm on I'm sure that. the fans listening tonight were absolutely riveted <laughs> winning that red score. They, they demanded they it. They had to have it. Yeah. They had to have it. Yeah. All right, Georgia back to work, but now the lead's just seven. Cook is the back. And Daniels, nothing doing. Tried to flip it out there on the edge. Mitchell. Can't get the ball downfield. We keep talking about how Clemson can't get the ball downfield. Georgia's had that same problem. Andrew Booth on one side. On that side, Mario Goodrich. And George Pickens, ACL in the spring. He'll be able to play this year, but not for a while. Dominic Blaylock also an ACL. He's closer to playing. He's been playing with the scout team, but can't, couldn't go tonight. You're really seeing the lack of a difference maker. You mentioned Kyrus Jackson hasn't quite looked himself with the knee brace. Pressure on second down. They flip it short. Smith makes the catch, gets out across the 30, third down coming up. And that's four. a tough ask by James Skowski. You get the ball out to Smith. We just talked about difference makers. They, they feel that Smith, Arian Smith, will become that. He's a freshman, six feet, 185 pounds, talking world class speed, like 10 100 type of speed. And Skow, Skowski's out there in the flat trying to catch up with that him. That one is fast. That is fly, that's world class. Hadn't gotten loose tonight. Georgia, four for 11 on third down. They try to throw it short and blowing up the play on the edge beautifully as Booth. What a play, fourth down. But, but it's not just a tackle, Chris. It was the anticipation and the reading of the play. He's able to get by a potential block of Burton, number seven, because he saw this and read this so quick. They see how he shoots right there, gets underneath Burton. Burton never had a chance. So he makes the tackle, but it was the recognition, the quick read, and how quick he was able to make a decision to get up there. It was a quick drive. Dogs not able to eat much clock. We'll have to punt it away here. It's a low boot, but it drives Taylor all the way back inside the 25. And he's able to scoot forward for his return through the 35 as the tempers begin to flare on that far side in the Tigers bench. Well, there, there must have been a a yeah, big hit there, a little hit towards the end. I think the reaction there from the bench, they're trying to get a, a call of a late hit on Taylor. Was it a horse collar? I think it was just the fact that it was well after he was out of bounds. Look. Snappers down there trying to get down. Horse, yeah, I don't, Dean's down there who's had a big night as a linebacker. Dean's up hitting him. Dean hit him in the head. We haven't had much Dabo of the is fired chippy up. department. Yeah, I was right in front of him. Yeah. This game has been played, I'd say, at a pretty clean level. Fierce, hard hitting, not a lot of chippy stuff. The punt, therefore, there's no running into the kicker. Result of play, first down. They did get close to it. I guess they actually got a piece of that, that low football. Dabo cannot believe there wasn't a personal foul from this SEC crew. See how close they came to, to getting that. 
I don't uh, see a tip there. They didn't touch it. They did bump him. They didn't bump the ball, though. This is who we are. There's a review. They knocked Camarda down, but the official said the punt was tipped, so that would have waved up the flag. It was not tipped by our angles. They're reviewing. To Bill Lamagne, the review should confirm that it wasn't tipped. This would be the five-yard variety. There wouldn't be a first down. That's correct. They've announced that it was running into the kicker, no running into the kicker because of the tip. Replay can review. The ball was not tipped. So we're talking about a five-yard penalty. It would so make Georgia it fourth could and two. take that fourth and two and, and, and have the punt again. The yeah, center judge right there makes the call that it's tipped. It, it wasn't really that close. And he's there with uh, referee Jason Autry. Dabo's, Dabo will not, Dabo still wants the late will not hit. be improved. No, no, he still wants the late hit. He's been working on the official since we left for break. I think he's got an argument for the late hit out yeah. of bounds. Dean hit him pretty late. Yeah. I do too, but it's smart they're talking to because they'll be given the option of punting again. Yeah, you want to punt again, give him fourth and two. He's still. When it happens right in front of the coach, and you don't call it, you're going to get no that. Touching of the punt. SEC. Therefore, Running into the kicker, five-yard penalty from the previous spot. It will be fourth down and two yards from the 37-yard line. So, this is what Bill was talking about. I don't think it's so much the snapper. It's this hit right there from Dean. I mean, he's two and a half, three yards out of bounds. I think he's clearly out of bounds. It's a shame they didn't pick that up because that's a major. I mean, that's 15 yards. Here's the question. It would have been offsetting. It would have been, no. What would the call would be? would not be offsetting because that's a dead ball foul. So you'd have the live ball foul for the running into the kicker. And then push after him back. that, you'd, yeah, you'd go, you go forward five. Then you're going to go back 15. Yeah. Right, but it wouldn't be a Clemson ball with the improved field position. No, it would be no, a re they still recap. wouldn't get the yeah. ball. No, you'd be back 15 yards from basically the 33-yard line. And, of course, Targeting could have come into play there had they chosen to review that. Involves Dean. Is that a monster game tonight? So, Marta out again. Nine penalties on Georgia tonight. Six on Clemson. Tigers peel back. Don't come after Camarda. Try to set up a return. And the fair catch is made by Taylor back at the 25 yard line. So, DJ Uyangalale, he's had a tough night, Kirk. You said he's been flustered. Hasn't had the kind of game he hoped, but it's a one score game midway in the fourth quarter. A chance to make up for all that. With yeah, some late heroics. Man, absolutely. And, and you think the more he's seeing in the defense, the more he's starting to understand what they're doing. But keep in mind, he needs help. I mean, I just keep waiting for him to use his frame at 250 pounds. And if they're playing man or he's got a lane to run, take off and help himself. But we've not seen much of that at all tonight. Delivers far side. Broken up. And Nick Flag comes in late. The reason a, the reason a flag comes in there is he never really located That's the football. Fierce. Defense number nine. Ball be placed the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. It's a near speed. And trying to work, get behind him. Ball's thrown as a back shoulder fade. I, I didn't see a whole lot of contact there. You almost wonder if that's a makeup call because Dabo's over there working him over on the sideline. It's been Mc, a lot more Mc, contact Mc, than Mc, another route Mc, tonight. Is saying, what, <laughs> what, what, what the heck there? Dog show pressure. Riangale rolls and has to lob it away. No chance to make a play on the edge. They went back testing speed again to the back Dixon. So again, this is the, the inexperience. You know, when you, when you want, you think you're going to hit, you're going to hit a, a wheel route down the sideline. You get excited about it. You think it's going to work, and you just lock in. You lock in. You lock in. You telegraph, and then you float it. 
Lucky threw that away where the defender could not make a play on the ball because floating it up there, the safety easily, if that ball's in play, makes an interception. But he brought the safety over by just staring it down the whole time. And Gata is set out to the right. He's been the key target tonight. And they try to get it to him in traffic, and he makes the catch. If you're the dogs, you're looking for number 10. He's been the playmaker tonight. Yeah, and one way to try to capitalize, Tony Elliott's saying, you know what? Instead of trying to defend these guys blitzing these backers, why don't we just bring a receiver, line him up from the outside, and just bring him into the middle where they're vacating by blitzing and just throw these little passes into the middle of that defense. And the guy is almost built like a tight end with his size. Strong hands, too. His catches have been in traffic tonight. Third and two from the pocket. Short pass. And fighting and stretching the ball for a first down there is Braden Galloway. So Clemson on the move now in Georgia territory by the nose of the football. Good recognition that time by DJ. They, they blitzed the linebacker Walker who was right across from Galloway. Looked like he was in coverage. He ends up blitzing. Safety was way off the line. So a little outcut gives him a chance to get the ball out quickly with that soft coverage and get a first down. Dropping back and pressured and dropped again is Uyangale. They get him for a seventh time tonight. They are so strong in the middle. Jordan Davis is lined up here. Watch how he just uses his power. 6'6", 340 pounds. He rips right through two offensive linemen. And what I love about a 340 pound guy is that he was relentless in his effort. He did not give up on that. Actually attacked the football and almost got it away. But it wasn't just him being big and strong. It was athletic ability and a never give up attitude there that got that sack. That symbolizes his skill set, doesn't it? Now, the way Angular takes off, finally, you go. Zion run a little delay, and he bulldozes to the 45 yard line. They'll need five on third down. Those, those linebackers are taking, who, what, what? Five's running? We haven't, we haven't seen that all game. And again, if you're wondering how they're going to use him in the running game, you would think, because at 250, he's not going to be Trevor Lawrence who could get close some ground in a hurry with the, that gate or those strides or Deshaun. It's more almost like a power runner, like you just saw right there. Getting down inside of five minutes. Is this four down territory? Two plays here to get the five yards? At five minutes to go, three timeouts, I'd be surprised. Here comes the pressure. They pick it up, ball out, catch made, no, incomplete. Galloway had his hands on it, could not hold it, and Seen was there to make a clutch play, and now it's decision time for Dabo, fourth and five. Give, give Seen a lot of credit, man. That was a big-time play. Galloway is a very talented receiver as a tight end, and he does a nice little whip route, comes back underneath, and as soon as he has the ball in his hand, 16's able to get up there and knock it right there with his hand. Gets his hand on the ball to dislodge it. He looks like he is going to go for it. Yeah, Sweeney put some chips in the middle of the table here. They need five. Heavy pressure. Ball out. Incomplete. They came flying up from the secondary, all three levels that time. Quarterback had no time. Dogs take over. Yeah, they, they, they brought scene. They brought the two middle linebackers. You're right, Chris. They dialed it up here, here, and here. <laughs> Overmatched the offensive line. Just not enough guys to pick up that pressure. And he's trying to hit the crosser, and that pressure got the best of him again. If you enjoy the defensive side, if you love a pass rush, man, you are heaven tonight. It's been ferocious. I mean, after the fourth down stop, the dogs take over. 4.49 left, sitting on a seven point lead. Georgia's offense has produced only a field goal tonight. White bangs straight forward. Time and time again, Brent Venables and the defense have had to step up. They've had to come up with an answer, they've had to come up with a stop. And they've been able to do that. I mean, this game felt like it was getting away from Clemson. It felt like, well, they're, they're going to get too far behind. But this defense has really answered the call. You mentioned it's 10-3, and we keep kind of kidding. It breaks. It feels like it's a lot more than that. But Georgia's only scored they had a pick six and a field goal. That's it. So 
Can the Tigers do it one more time as we get close to four minutes to go in this game and try to get the ball back to Uwe Ungalele? The old man Skalski directing traffic out there. White, can he get the edge? And he's knocked down at the 46. It'll be third and short. Here's the only touchdown George has scored. Christopher Smith jumping the route. 74 yard pick six return. Third down play. Blitz coming. Smith is a veteran anticipating a throw right at the sticks, which is exactly what he got on a glance route. Jumped it, eyes up. And that is the difference in the game and the only touchdown that we have seen tonight. Talked about that Clemson defense, Kirk. Georgia only needs a yard. They can pick up three feet. They can keep chewing on this clock. With that sugar huddle, quick huddle here. Play clock down at one. They snap it. On the end around, it was Cook. And they do move the six. It's been one of those kind of nights. If you just tuned in and watch it, you've been watching a lot of other games and people are scoring points. I mean, we're going sugar huddle, jet sweep, fake the sweep, fake the sweep the other way, go jet sweep back the other way, get that half yard, move the sticks. <laughs> Even though <laughs> Georgia got the first down, Clemson's going to spend a timeout right here, 3.15 to go. Venable's defense, do one more chance to get him off the field, get the football back. Reminder, in this slot tomorrow night, Tallahassee, the Irish come calling. On ABC, also on the ESPN app, and then Monday night, Louisville and Ole Miss. Rebels a 10-point favorite in Atlanta. Interested to see Jack Cohn coming over from Wisconsin, where he was a starter and last year lost his job to Graham, uh, Graham Mertz, who ended up becoming the guy in Madison. So he left, transfer portal, went to Notre Dame, won the job, and we'll get a chance to see how he's fitting into that offense. Got a lot of. Really, really good playmakers around him. Kyron Williams in that backfield. Good receivers. I think one of the best tight ends in the country, Michael Mayer, against the Florida State team. Mike Norvell trying to change that culture, getting things going in Tallahassee. Big bodies up there. And going to play some smash mouth football to bleed the clock. That's Kendall Milton. Black rolling. It'll be inside of three minutes. Yeah, holding on to those two timeouts. Venable's almost halfway out of the field, communicating, making sure everybody's on the same page. May have been a busted gap. And right now, they are just trying to shoot gaps. Brzee was there. He beat his man, got into the backfield, but a pretty good job of getting around him to get some positive yards to set up a second and six. And Daniels in no hurry, obviously, trying to milk that clock. A bit of standing in the huddle, watching the play clock. Tick down inside of seven. Now they'll run up there quickly. Once again, end around. Cook makes a cut, and he's knocked down about a yard short of the marker. They're also kind of in fringe field goal range for Pudlesny if they want to try a long one to pretty much ice the game. That would be in play here. But these tight ends are working from Georgia. Doing a really good job. Both Fitzpatrick. And Brooke Bowers helping set the edge on some of these outside runs. Let's go back to Kevin Nagandi, get an update from the Rose Bowl. Your UCLA Bruins. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way they're still hanging in Herbie's there. Herbie's UCLA Bruins continue. This is DTR to Chase Coda right now. It's 21 10 UCLA. Also over on ESPN updating you right now. Early in this one in the first quarter, BYU Arizona is scoreless. Chris, Herbie, back to you. He's got to get in front of these bold predictions. You can't react to UCLA beating LSU and going, what's going on over there in Brentwood? These boys are playing ball. You got to try to. It's Westwood. Or Westwood, <laughs> Westwood, not Brentwood, Westwood. But you got to take a little bit of a chance. Well, Once in a while, you stumble into one. Put it out there, Westwood, Brentwood. Well, Westwood. <laughs> Westwood. Tonight's in Pasadena. All right, here's the big There's, ball. I actually saw some UCLA fans in the stadium, which is exciting. That's good. In the yard, move the sticks again. White is the back. He's got it, and he's got a first down, running physically, banging down to the 25, and the Georgia fans and the Bulldog players can feel it now. Boy, Skowski just missed getting into the backfield. Watch him at middle linebacker. He shoots and just misses, and really good cut by White. 
felt him there in the hole, gets around him, and then takes on Spectre, gets off of him and Goodrich. Hard running that time by White. Taking a long time for the dogs to get this running game going, but they have come up with this four-minute offense opportunity to pound away to kill this clock and get the W. And so far up to it. Again, using almost the entire play clock. And then now, yeah, a little too close for comfort. So they will take a timeout. A minute 44 to go. Wow, and the intensity, the energy in this place, the collision of, of two heavyweights, inexperience on both sides, a lot of mistakes on both sides. The defense have had their way, but it's, first of all, it's fun to be in a close game with you. <laughs> it's fun to be in a close game. I don't think we had one last No, year. we did not. No, 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 really, the whole season, we didn't yes, have a close game. Really? What did you say the average? I remember. It was, it was every time 26 was points per game was the So, hey, we got a one-possession game, and it's just, um, you know, both these teams knew that it was going to be a battle. Both these teams knew when you take on a top five opponent, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be a grind. There's going to be some tough moments. No matter what happens, you win, you lose, you're going to grow and develop and, and keep growing. Um, and Clemson, man, if they lose this game, you know, they've got to do a good job of getting their offensive line right. So much to learn from with their young quarterback and how they get better around it. Of course, the fact is Clemson's going to be heavily favored in all of their ACC games after this. That's why it's not an elimination game. This is white, but they don't want to hear about that. There's so much work to do, and this has just been such an un -Clemson like offensive performance. And, and for Uri Angelale, who came into this season with a lot of hype, a lot of praise from his coaches, there's so much to like about him, not what he expected from himself and what the Clemson fans thought was going to happen tonight. No, no, not at all. I mean, he, he came in. Highly decorated, could have gone to any school in the country and ends up coming all the way across the country to go to, to Clemson to become that next guy after Trevor Lawrence. But I'll tell you this, I don't know if what you're saying is if I agree with it. I don't feel that they might be heavily favored, but I don't think it's just throw your helmet out on the field kind of year for Clemson with this offense. I didn't say that. I think there's going to be some games, especially when they go on the road, with this offensive line and with this young quarterback who's got a tremendous upside, still trying to find a running back, I, I think they're We're at I NC State. Could be at, at Syracuse in a Friday. Could be anywhere. I mean, okay. This offensive line right now with this offense, I know George is great, but I don't know, man. It, but one more first down would do it. White. Tries to make a play, lowers the shoulder, gets down inside the 20. Tigers cannot stop the clock here. And dogs won't have to snap this till about 50 seconds to go for this third down play. Now we're talking a lot about Clemson, but we got to focus on Georgia too. I mean, it, it looks like they got a chance to, to probably win this game. And, and JT Daniels, they're going to continue to get better with this offense. This defense that Georgia has, going to keep them in every game they play, going to make them, they're going to be a team that's going to be a heavy favorite in every game that they play. And you would expect them to have a chance to get to Atlanta and have another shot down the road, more likely to play Alabama in Atlanta. They got UAB next week. Then they got five SEC teams in a row that they have dominated in recent years. It includes a road game at Auburn and then, of course, the cocktail party. Yep. And I don't know if they're heavily favored in that, but... They look good, and they look like the clear favorites to uh, once again lead the country in rush yards allowed. Clemson has a grand total of two what, rushing yards when you subtract the sack yardage. What two. I like about Georgia's defense is I like how Dan Lanning and his personality with Kirby Smart, you could just feel the confidence that they have in their front. And they've got some special leadership with this group. Wyatt up front, Davis gets a lot of attention, but Wyatt's leadership, attitude from Nolan Smith, Dean's leadership, Adam Anderson's playmaking ability on the back end. You have Seen and Smith at safety. I don't know. There's just a lot of uh, intangibles and, and kind of love for one another that make this defense going to be really fun to watch all year. So they can run this play. Obviously, if they make the first down, it's game over. Even if they don't, play clock will wind all the way down. They would choose to either try to kick a field goal to put the game away or run some kind of fourth down play and leave Clemson almost no time. Yeah. White. Forget the strategizing. Don't need to worry about that as he barrels for a first down and the dogs are going to come to Charlotte 
the Tigers' backyard and get a huge momentum building W. The hype will begin to build for this team. They could move up to number two right behind Alabama, even though the offense didn't find the end zone. I tell you, man, Kirby, you'd be satisfied with this one. You take on a matchup like this in college football. It is so good for the game to see the, the willingness to play in games like this. And Clemson's going to fall back, but they're going to have a chance to regroup. But this is monumental for Georgia. A big win against a rival in Clemson in a top five matchup to start the season. Not pretty, but gritty. And again, if you enjoy the ferocious pass rush, a lot to appreciate tonight from Kirby Smart's defense. They sacked Uyangalale seven times, harassed him a whole bunch of other times, influenced a lot of throws, and made him look mighty uncomfortable. Yeah, I think that was the goal. As good as he's going to be, he's still a young guy, right? He's still trying to figure things out. And I think what happened last year is he came in against Boston College, and he came in against Notre Dame, and he had so much experience around him that it, it made it just look like, oh, no problem. This is turnkey with a guy like this. And without Travis Etienne and without some of the offensive linemen, they're, they're going to have to start from square one with him and build the offense around him and, and gain some confidence because they did not run the football. And I think that had a lot to do with the predictability of the play calling. JT Daniels did not light it up tonight, but he goes to 5-0 and as a starter at Georgia. Now let's go down to Holly. Well, we were ready, but now they're going to take a second to talk to Brent Venables and James Skalski. Kirby took his time saying some nice words to many of these players. And, Coach, for you, you built your career on defense. You know what good defense looks like. How do you describe what you saw out there tonight? Aggressive, getting after it. You're either elite or you're not. And that's what we've been saying all camp. You're either elite or you're not. And tonight we played a really good game defensively. And look, guys, Clemson's got an unbelievable team. But I'm so proud for our university to come in this atmosphere in their backyard where they play their ACC championship game and come here and win this game. A lot of resiliency and a lot of composure. There will be hype after this game for your group. But what does this win actually mean realities-wise for you? Just like we said if we had lost. Everything's still in front of us, but we got a really tough game next week against a team that's really good, and we're going to have to spend a lot of time getting better to be able to be the team we want to be. Your offense extended a drive when they had to in game-winning fashion. What do you say about your offensive performance? Connection, resiliency, composure, and toughness. That's what this team's about, and they believe in that. And they love each other. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Those are four great qualities to have, aren't they? We just talked about, you know, when we were wrapping up the broadcast, we just talked about and witnessing the team. You can just sense how much they like each other. And, and that, that, remember I talked, you talked about what, what's the difference in defensive football this year from last year? It's that stuff yeah. right there. That's why you play good defense. Six different dogs got sacks tonight. That makes it sweet. And big Jordan Davis, one of those guys in the middle there is with Holly now. Well, this man was the anchor. How sweet was it for you to get this kind of defensive performance and win in your hometown? It's amazing. Uh, we came out here, we wanted to make a statement, and uh, we just came out here, we played our game, we worked on our technique. This is something we've been working for all summer, so when we come out here and do the, play the game we're supposed to play, especially in the whole town, it's amazing. It's an amazing feeling. Sometimes first games don't go to, to script. How do you guys think you did from a really being focused and being mentally prepared tonight? Well, we was always mentally prepared. We came in here, we have a business trip, we have a job to do. Um, you know, some things don't fall our way, but we adjust, we get back to where we need to do, and we get back to our technique. Our technique saves us at the end of the day. I saw Clemson trying to defend you with two and three players on almost every snap. How did you have the endurance to get this win and finish this game? Uh, it's something that I expect. You know, I always say two on me, somebody's free. So, you know, I free up a linebacker or I free up another D lineman so they can eat. So it's amazing that they have that type of respect for me. But, you know, at the end of the day, I just want to do whatever I can to help the team. Everybody ate tonight in Charlotte, your hometown. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. That was a feast, you're right, Holly. They, they smothered the running game. They got after DJ Christopher Smith with a 74-yard pick six was the difference. What an engaging he's a great guy. defensive tackle. Yeah. I mean, his size comes over to talk to Holly, and he's just like a pro sitting there talking to Holly, post-game presser. Boy, he is a it's 99. Keep an eye on him all year, right in the middle of that defense. Defense only had to play 60 snaps against that Clemson offense. That was a relief. He looks like he could play another game right now, big man. Huh? <laughs> It was fun. We hope you enjoyed it. Full-fledged college football coming back. We appreciate the fact that we can have Mark Amento, Mike Black, Darren Brown back in the booth.
game was produced by Bill Bunnell, directed by Derek Mobley. Great to have all of our crew back together. Kirk, enjoy it next week. We'll see you in Happy Valley in a couple of weeks for the whiteout game, Nittany Lions and the Auburn Tigers. Tomorrow on ABC, Notre Dame and Florida State now except on the West Coast. Stay tuned for your local news. From our entire ESPN family tonight, so long for Charlotte, 10-3, Georgia.